It's time for Windows Weekly. I'm back. Paul Thorat's here. Mary Jo Foley. Lots to talk about. A new build for Windows 11. This one's less reliable. Microsoft finally admits Mary Jo Foley got it right. And we've got at least one price point for the new Windows 365. That and a whole lot more coming up next on Windows Weekly. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Thorat and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 734, recorded Wednesday, July 21st, 2021. Show me your hands, Bob. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Akamai. Akamai is the world's largest distributed edge compute platform. To deliver and protect your digital experiences worldwide, tap into Akamai for its unrivaled intelligence, performance, and scalability. Visit Akamai.com slash WW today to learn more. And by Worldwide Technology and HPE. WWT has an innovative culture, thousands of IT engineers, application developers, unmatched labs, and the integration centers for testing and deploying technology at scale. WWT helps customers bridge the gap between strategy and execution. To learn more about WWT, visit WWT.com slash twit. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show where we cover the latest news from Microsoft with the wonderful uh, and talented Mary Jo Foley from allaboutmicrosoft.com, or ZDNet blog, looking really sharp with her <laughs> Micah Sargent-provided anchor webcam. Oh, man. So that's, sharp. That's so crisp, it hurts my uh, eyes. It's like you've Me upgraded too. the VGA from whatever, e, what, EGA or... It's like when you get new glasses and suddenly everything's yeah. too clear. Yeah. Right. Really looks good. Then, then of course, Mr. Potato Cam, Paul Thorot <laughs> from Thorot.com. T-H-U-R-R-O-T-T.com. But together, regardless of image, they make sure. the dynamic duo of Microsoft reporting. You know what? You're going to be able to see Paul Thorot in crystal clear, perfect Perfect representation of Paul Thorat when you join <laughs> us oh, yes. on the Twit Cruise. Right. We are announcing we've, we 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 got sixty people to sign up. Wow. Well, and yes. that meant we get another cabin. Sorry, Mary Jo. That's I think that's it. You know what? Really? It's okay. I don't think I'm ready for a cruise. Oh, so. it's not till next July. It's a year off. I know. I'm the, feeling uh, a little squeamish. I don't blame you. But we're, I, <laughs> I went by seniority. I'm so ready for this. I went by seniority. So, so we uh, we yeah, asked. that's good. I asked Steve Great. Gibson, and he mm -hmm. said, he said, my wife says under no circumstances. I said, okay. And wow. uh, Paul, you were second in line. Uh, mm -hmm. nice. Believe it or not, you are the number two in seniority here at Twit. I'm used to being number two. That's cool. Um, <laughs> I <laughs> no, I, I I have no interest in cruises other than Alaska. This I've always said this. Oh, that's and, great. Um, cool. Yeah, I've been dying to do this exact thing for many years. So that's it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going on Holland America. It's next July, a year from now, mm -hmm. uh, and we invite everybody who listens to the show or listens to any of our podcasts and wants to come. We'd love to see you. Lisa and I'll be going. Uh, Paul will be taking Stephanie, I presume, or or somebody. Yep. Yeah. No, she's she's ready to do Is a cocktail excited? class if needed. You know yeah. what? Okay, I I didn't want to push. Yep. No, nope, she's totally on board. I was going to ask figuratively and literally. That would be <laughs> awesome. Yep. That yeah. would be. Uh, I told her if you do this, people will be way more interested in you than me, <laughs> for sure. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, We're going to Alaska. Sure. We're going to see the. Glaciers is beautiful. Uh, you get to sail around Glacier yeah. Bay. It's really beautiful. I've done it. I did it once before in Holland, America. So I, I'm familiar with it. It's going to be great. We're on a beautiful ship, the Eurodom. Anyway, you want to know more? We'd love to have you with us. Cruise.twit.tv. And I think I misspoke. Uh, previously, I spoke. I thought that every 60 people signed up that we'd get mm -hmm. another host. But I, they, I was told... No, no, they, no. <laughs> that's not how it works. <laughs> that's, all, that's not how it works. Oh, I see. Uh, we, we can bring, uh, we get a total of two cabins, I guess. Uh, and th I think mostly they're concerned about selling out because we're, because sure. they're getting it, we're getting a pretty good deal because, you know, it, yeah, they're, yeah, yeah. So I, I think they're just afraid that, you know, come next July, there's going to be people saying, well, I'll pay you twice as much. So they don't want to, they don't yeah. want to give away too much. Mm -hmm. But, I, I, I'm looking forward to it. If this goes well, we'll do it again. And, of course, Mary Jo will invite you. Uh, Cruise.twit.tv. 
if you want to join Paul and me and our spouses. I think a lot of people, more people want to see Stephanie and Lisa than the one. Oh, for Paul, yeah. I, we already know this. You and I will just be drinking <laughs> scotch in the back wondering what went wrong, but it's okay. I think it's we okay. should have a peanut butter whiskey session at some point. Oh, I like oh it. you should. You totally should. Yeah. Oh, like right. an award for the best peanut butter and jelly cocktail. <laughs> Ooh, that would be fun. All right. We'll yeah. contact, we'll contact the nice. ship and Make sure they <laughs> right. Make sure we're stocked. Yeah. Stock enough <laughs> peanut butter whiskey for right. a large. I, I don't know how the crew. ship went down. I guess they had a lot of this peanut butter whiskey on board or something. <laughs> <laughs> the last the thing weird. the captain said was, "Bring me jelly." Uh, all right, enough, enough fooling around. Uh, this is a serious podcast where we talk about oh, serious issues. Yeah. Um, and I think we're talking about Windows Eleven. Still. Yep. Still. Still. Uh, we we'll talked about this one for a while. You don't have it we in your be. notes, but there is a security flaw. Oh, no, it's in there. Oh, it's yeah. Okay. There. Oh, actually, yeah. the new one. No, there, it should be. There's a new, uh, What? somebody's oh, the, calling it one? Hive Nightmare, which I think is not, yeah, yeah, yeah. not a good name. Actually, maybe, no. did I not read? Uh, I wrote about it. I guess I must have. Well, let's do it there. right now. The printer one's in there. Well, the we, got some, we, we got some. Uh, <laughs> There's so we many. Some more, There's so many. Some yeah, it's hard to know where to like. start. Okay. I know. So, oh, no, no, um, we, I got it. I got it. I got it. It's in there. It's in. It's in. Okay. It's under more windows. We'll get there to more windows. Yeah. yeah. Um, but okay. first, we got another build. Which, how many is this? Three? Third. Third yep. build? Third. Although, you know, the last two were just cumulative updates, right? So these are yep. minor, minor changes. I understand you talked Micah into installing it. <laughs> hmm. I feel like Did he we? talked himself into installing it. Yeah, wow. me too. He I'm, wanted to be among the cool kids with uh, Elvis and stuff, you know. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think Did, I... I does I it work well on a Surface? Uh, he has a Surface laptop. Yeah, the blue velvet. Yeah. Yeah. It, should be fine. Uh, the only, I, I will say this third build has added some instability to the system. Really? I haven't had yeah. any trouble. I haven't had trouble. So on two of my computers, if I click like the um, the clock and time, the whole mm -hmm. Explorer crashes. I can oh, wow. do like Windows mm -hmm. key plus N to bring it up, but I can't click on it. Mm -hmm. Huh. And then File Explorer, you know, I, I've got different little issues. <laughs> and also problems with the build. <laughs> I'm here all week, folks. Anyway. Oh, Micah, Micah <laughs> says, Micah says he's having trouble with the latest update, too. Mm. Yep. On Discord, uh -huh. he said that. Yep. I, but I'm not. Why am I not? I'm running it on AMD, the HP AMD Ryzen laptop that you gave me. But it seems to be okay. Yeah, should be fine. Yeah. But, you know. We'll get there. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. So what's new I mean, though? Was there new stuff? Yeah, Is there anything new in this there was that entertainment uh, widget, which I didn't uh, see because I have widgets turned off. Basically, it's an ad for movies in the Microsoft Store, right? That's what it right. is. Yeah. Yep. That, I mean, fair. I mean, not even being facetious. That's what it is. <laughs> no, I, when I saw entertainment, I assumed it had been about it was about entertainment topics, but those are That's already in thought. the widget thing. And it's right. yeah, you're right. It's about movies that you can get from movies and TV. Yeah, yeah. So that kind of makes me think the widget capability is not just going to be about um, pushing Bing and MSN news, but also a place to put ads, whether they call them. Oh, ads for sure. Or not. There's no right. doubt about it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, there was that. And otherwise, it was like just a bunch of smallish stuff, right? The other like, thing is, you know, I think this is worth pointing out the the first public build that we got from the Windows Insider program was build 22,000 something. I don't remember, 35 or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, the last two builds have been 22,000 dot something else. Like, I think the new one right. might be 0.71 or something. Mm -hmm. This is the build, right? Like, this is yep. this is kind of like this Microsoft saying, like, this yeah. thing's kind of done. I mean, obviously, there's features done. to add and, yeah. and things right. like that. But, I mean, the system itself is, that's pretty much that's it. That's it. It is. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Which, I, you know what? It's, that's not a bad thing, right? I mean, because like we said on the last show, insiders mm -hmm. have already tested most of the big new features because they were in the dev channel and then they pulled them out of the dev channel, right? Um, right, right. So you've already seen what's in there pretty much. The one thing that, well, we're going to talk about Teams in a minute, but the other one thing that we haven't seen still is the Android apps capability in the new store app. That's not there still. That's right. 
Right. But otherwise, like everything that we thought it, was going to be there is Mostly. There, right? So here, here's some, so I have this as part of my tip for much later in the show. But okay. um, uh, one of the Inspire um, sessions about when, well, the, <laughs> I will say the Inspire session about Windows 11 had yeah. a, you know, yeah. it's a little insipid, but they did like kind of a marketing video where they kind of fly through all the new features in Windows 11. And one of them was one I, I didn't quite understand what the point of it was. You know, if you use, when, if you use, mm-hmm. we use Windows over the past few years, you have seen things like, you use a microphone or a webcam and sometimes a little icon appears down or sometimes mm-hmm. the little location services icon will appear down there in the tray. Yeah. And in Windows 11, there's a light blue microphone icon that appears in the tray mm-hmm. when you're using yep. the microphone as I am now. So I can see well, it. Well, that's a good feature, actually. Uh, Apple yes. does that with their iPhone. Now. Yeah. And you see that right So that you know Android. that somebody's listening. Mm-hmm. Right. But the thing is, it's supposed to work as a global toggle for muting the microphone. Yeah. Which I think is a fantastic oh, idea. Yeah. That is. Um, that, yeah. that does not work right now. So it's there, but you can, and you can mouse over it and you can click it. It doesn't do anything. It, will, it just tells you a list of the apps that are using your microphone. In this case, it's just one Zoom. And eventually you can click it and it will toggle the microphone off. And I, that's, that's great. It's a little thing. It's not a, not a, you know, there are no rounded corners on it or anything like that, but it's, uh, I think that's a neat little feature. That's good. So, when do you think they'll put the Android feature in? Like, do you think they're having trouble with that, or no? I, I, I think. Well, so one of the things we're about to talk about is they're adding Teams. You know, we knew the Teams, the meeting, meet with Teams, which now apparently is just a brand new Teams client uh, was coming, and that is, now, you know, they discussed that yesterday. And the the biggest thing, though, to me is this Android App Store. In part, not just because it's going to bring Android apps, but because it's kind of a, a look at how Microsoft will integrate third-party stores into the Microsoft Store. And I think we're going to see yeah. more of these over time. So right. it's kind of interesting on a number of levels. But they've never said mm-hmm. when. I, no. I would think, I'm sure in the next 30 days we'll see it. But I mean, and they need to do the, what do they, what do they call it? The Android subsystem for Windows to make it work, right? So well, we that's what I'm worried about that is. is that maybe that's not... <laughs> That, yeah. They're getting. They're not. Um, first of all, it's not theirs, right? It's. It, they're getting it from what Adobe? What, what did they say? I forgot. No. Uh, oh, there's going to be no, an they, Amazon mini Am, store. Amazon mini store, but well, they, they worked with Intel on some Intel, of the technology. That's right. It's the yeah. Intel. Although, bridge, yeah, uh, it's still going to work on that non-Intel systems, including Windows 10 on ARM devices too. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yeah. I hope it's yeah, not, and actually, I hope the it's Intel just, bit was one of those things where they're like, "Well, we'll we'll talk about this more in the future." They yeah. still really haven't described what it is. It's just a white labeled blue stacks or something. Yeah. <laughs> that would be so <laughs> depressing. Like, they did make it sound like more. They made it sound like Windows yeah. subsystem for Linux, like but except yeah. for Android. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. 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 But we should talk about the Teams thing because that That's just true. showed up yesterday. The news well, the news did. I didn't get the Teams. No uh, one. I don't know anyone button. has. I mean Well, there's people in our Discord saying they got it. Um oh, really? so, Yep. You so bastards. a subset of a subset of Windows Insiders got this starting yesterday, mm. I guess. This is, you know, there there's a Skype oh, the Meet thing. Now button on Windows 10 right now, but they're replacing that with a Teams chat button on Windows 11, which is very understandable. And um, they're going to start testing that as of this week. So basically, I'm going to say this again: it's like an ad for Teams. That's yeah. what it is. Oh, and well, there, but there is also right. a new Teams client coming, and there I actually is. got a leaked version yeah. of that earlier. That's it's super yeah. limited, but yeah, eventually that's going to replace Teams. Hey, can we ask a yeah. question of the Discord chat? Uh, those people who you know kind of turn the hunter hunters into the hunted. Um, yeah. Those people who did get this, did they get a cumulative update? Is that how it got onto the system, or do they do they not know how it popped up? Um, one, Kev Brewer said, I had a pop-up tonight suggesting I try the new Teams taskbar chat. Oh, uh, so it just kind of appeared. Pops up, yep. And then okay. somebody else said it was an accumulative update. Yeah, Jack K maybe? says that it was a cumulative yep. update. Bam, yeah. contrary advice. Okay. No, he may be talking about something else, so I don't know. <laughs> okay, no, I'm just, yeah. I'm just curious how it appears. Because yeah. if it's a I cumulative know. update, I mean, I'll look for it, I guess, but... They didn't, you know what? The blog post they did yesterday didn't really say how it would come to you. They just said some de- some right. insiders are going to get it, but they didn't say like a new flight and they didn't say a pop up. They didn't say how. It just was like, it's I mean, I think the assumption there. was they'll <laughs> release another cumulative update. It will be yeah. 22,000.74 or something. And yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, that's okay. what, that was what I was thinking, but they never actually said that. Maybe because the build will come out today, later or something like that. I don't know. Um, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Today, tomorrow, right? we're going to yeah. just get it. But, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I could wait a day or two, but beyond that, that's I'm going to have to. Raphael has a, <laughs> has a little hack that will get it onto your system yeah. if you really want it. All right. So the main purpose of them doing this Teams chat button is to try to get more people to use the consumer features in Teams. That's why they put this button there. Um, right. You know, they're assuming it, they're assuming people who click on it are going to either have Teams for Business installed and haven't yet set up the consumer features, or if you haven't even got Teams for Business installed, there'll be a, a choice where you, it'll say "Get the Teams app and download it and install it on your machine." That's why I said it's like an ad, it's like an ad almost for Teams, right? But I got to say, when I got the Skype Meet Now button on Windows 10, when I finally got that, I didn't even notice I had it for like, right. I don't know, two, three weeks. And then when I saw it, I'm like, what's that thing? Like, I never saw that before. And I click on it. I'm like, oh, I don't care. And I think yeah, that's like right the same thing by. with Teams. <laughs> yeah. You should have yeah. played the <laughs> notepad uh, menu. You would have seen it then. I know. I know. I, <laughs> well, no, this time I saw it's, it it's an icon, though. Like, like it, will be, um, yeah. it will be more... A slightly more elevated visually yeah. because it's a, one of those app icons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I just didn't, you know me. I never noticed the icons because I never really. No, oh, that one was the meat. Icon. Now is really subtle for sure. It is. Yeah. It looks like a little square, like almost like a seatbelt buckle or something. I'm like, I don't even know what that is. It didn't say Skype on it or anything, right? No, I think it's supposed to be a probably like a webcam or something. I, I don't. Oh, know. really? Oh, hmm. okay. I don't have it. Anyway, in front of me, so I can't look at it yeah <laughs> yeah so if you if you get this team's chat icon like that you know it doesn't have all the features yet and they are saying ultimately their plan is that it will it, you'll be able to get access to the new updated teams app which has rounded corners i know everyone can't wait it's got rounded corners <laughs> well um <laughs> but, it's also, but it's also not built with electron so it should be exactly smaller right. lighter faster, faster i think it's uh, re hope. react based yeah yeah um, so yep, that's, that's kind of the lure of, of what's coming. Um, but otherwise, I mean, it, it works like teams, right? I mean, it's going to give you all the teams yeah. features that you know and love or hate, depending on your thoughts on teams. Um, so and, my early look at this new app has not been positive, yeah. but I think it's because oh, really? it's oh. in such an early state. But one of the yeah. problems with even the existing teams app, if you've ever tried the consumer features, is you know, yeah. You basically have two versions of teams, you know, mm -hmm. there's no real integration between the two per se. And yeah. it's, it kind of continues that I, I uh, teams for consumers today is such a wasteland. Yeah. Um, and that's, right. you know, that will change, but it's just kind of hard mm -hmm. to, it's just, you look, yeah. you have to invite people to, to even just use it. Like if you and I wanted to chat, yeah. one yeah. of us would have to invite the other, even though we're already mm -hmm. friends on Skype or whatever. Right. Which right. is very strange. Um, and it's so, you have the option to add people in as your Outlook contacts or your Skype contacts, but it's yeah. an option, right? right just automatically right. integrate them in. They should um, just pull the Skype contacts in. I think that, I don't understand why they don't just do I that. And make it kind of a seamless replacement. Yep. But yeah, I mean, I'm like, I, I think people got all hyped up about this because they thought some people thought, and I was among them, that they were going to actually integrate the Teams app in Windows. 11, like it was going to be already pre-installed, kind of like Xbox or whatever, right? But it's not that. Yeah. Um, um, well, I wonder if it is going to turn into of, that. Well, right, I think, think the reason the, they didn't was legal questions, right? Antitrust fears and, you know, Slack. Slack's already been like, oh, wait, we're going to go after you for this, Microsoft. So, yeah. I mean, Windows 10 already has Skype. I know. You know? Yeah. I don't, know. I don't, I don't but, what's the difference? But Slack, well, Slack is more afraid of Teams than Skype, right? Yeah, but if you, this new Teams is terrible. All you have to say is, yeah, no, we, we integrated, <laughs> but it's awful. So you don't have nothing yeah. to worry about. No don't one's worry, ever going to use this. Yeah. <laughs> like, the one thing we can assure you is this is not going to have a lot of users. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Um, anyway, I, I, right now it's kind of rudimentary features. They're, they're promising to add more features as they continue to put out more builds. Um, yeah. Yeah. It'll be, I'll, I'll be interested to see how many people actually figure out what this is and use it and kind of if it does actually increase their consumer numbers. But we may never know that because they I, I've never seen them release a breakout of Teams consumer, right? Like how many people are, who are Teams users are, are using consumer features, right? It has to yeah. be 
almost nobody. Tiny, right? Yeah. It has to be, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. It, it, but at least, hey, they, they said they were going to do it when they announced Windows 11, and here it is, not that far into the process. I'd give anything for Microsoft to release data about the percentages of Windows 10 users, let's say, who use built-in apps like Skype and OneNote and Mail and Calendar and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, they won't. You know, there's, I mean, no. there's no reason, there's no good reason for them to do it. But right. it'd be kind of interesting because you have that kind of, I don't know what they call it, like the law of defaults or whatever it is, where, mm. you know, just by bundling stuff, stuff, uh, some app or service in a phone or a tablet or a PC or whatever tends to drive usage. But I feel like that doesn't happen as much on PCs these days as it used to and not as much as maybe it does on mobile. Mm. But that's just my mm -hmm. opinion. I don't really know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So is this just a new version of Teams that we're all going to get eventually? This is not something yeah. special for Windows yeah. 11. Oh, no, right. it's special. It's it's in Windows 11. <laughs> <laughs> it's, but wait, well, Windows, Windows 11, 10 but, users... Windows 10 users are not going to get this, or they are? Oh, I no, they absolutely are going to get it. This is just they won't a get the version. Yeah. yeah, they won't get oh, that they taskbar won't get thing. This? Oh, Oh, no, I mean, I mean the, the new version of Teams. Yeah, the new version. Oh, of, of course. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why yeah. would they make an app and not give it to everyone? <laughs> well, exactly. in this case, I mean, okay, if you were to ask anyone who uses Teams, what's the number one problem with Teams, right? They would say oh, it's too big slow, and heavy. and fast, yep. bloated, blah, blah, yep. blah. Yep. So that's, that's the big aim with this new client is fixing that. So yeah. that has to yep. go to everyone. It can't just be for Windows 11. Right, right. Is it still Electron? No. no, it's uh, React. React. Oh, React. so that's the big yep. change. Yeah. Right, and it'll be it'll be available in the store, the new store mm -hmm. too, which the current Teams app is not. Oh, that's a um, huge improvement, or yep. it, yeah. at least not. It should be. It right. should be. Uh, going yep. from Electron, which is basically a Chrome browser, yeah. uh, right. shipped yeah. with you know Chromium shipped with the app to React, which yeah. is basically a JavaScript framework, which should be pretty. Yeah. I would think pretty responsive. Teams is. Um, you know, it's like an aircraft carrier. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it has everything you need, but it's really big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's still a web app. It's just a, they're rendering it a different yeah. way. It, it's just the entire web in an app. Yeah, basically, yeah. yes. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yep. It's the web. The in web. An app. <laughs> you know, we said we'd do yeah. it, and now we have. Yeah. You wanted the web offline. Here it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not like a Chromebook where you can only do it online. <laughs> Yeah. We got the yeah, web but, everywhere. Yeah. Um, it's funny because we had that theory, uh, you know, quickly forgotten and properly so that, that this was going to be the kind of the Teams version of Windows. It was going to be teamified yeah. Yeah. everywhere. And they didn't do that. Thank goodness. Still time. I, I <laughs> still too feel late. Like, no, I, I, I do feel like that's going to happen over time. I really do. Yeah. Um, I thought that's how they were going to sell it to the home user, right? Connect with everything yeah. you love. Kind of, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And everything you hate, but here it is anyway. It's yeah. it's built in. So you yeah. watched all the Inspire sessions and there was but one on Windows 11? No, no, I didn't. I watched two Inspire sessions. Oh. <laughs> but but, I, but uh, I'll talk about that as part of my tip, so I'll, I'll go Later. to that at the end. Later, but folks. The reason to watch the Windows 10 was, even though it is... Pretty damn insipid. Is there's a neat, there's a neat little well. It's just goofy hosts. I don't know what they do, but yeah, yeah. but there's a is, there's is a nice the guy with the uh, the hat or another one. No, no, yeah. I love that Rick guy, Tilly. Uh, Rick Loss. Yeah, no, I wish I wish it was Rick. Um, Rick no, and his Tilly hat. Yeah, no, it's not. I that. wore a Tilly hat the entire time. I was yeah. smart. Pretty damn yeah. insipid. It's now yeah. our uh, show title. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just no, wrote that. I, it's, you know, Inspire, it's a partner show, right? So you have to address yeah. all, people at all yeah, levels. Yeah, it's not a technical show. I understand. That's right. Yeah. right. It's not for developers. Yeah. or anything. No, not for developers. Um, yeah. How about context menus and the share dialogue? Apparently there's some changes yeah, there. Yeah, so Microsoft put out a blog post aimed at developers telling them how they can... Uh, customize the context menus, like when you right-click on the desktop or the taskbar or whatever, uh, built into Windows 11, and the share dialog. These are two features that, well, the share dialog probably started, well, the dialog started in Windows 10. It used to be a share pane that started in Windows 8, but context menu customization has been a capability that developers could uh, do, I don't even know, back to the 1990s probably, a long time ago. 
So I was kind of curious about this, but actually there's more going on here because the this blog post was kind of a neat description of how they had improved these things in Windows 11. So the developer stuff, it's like whatever. Um, I, I, the big important thing to know is that anyone who has used a computer for a while knows you right click on the desktop and your context menu has like 21 items in it. And if you have like an NVIDIA graphics card, for example, there'll be like two NVIDIA items in there typically. And the Intel can add stuff to it, you know, depending on what kind of hardware you have. And there's all this like stuff in there. And so they're trying to cut down on that and they're, they're presenting like a simpler new uh, default context menu. If you have uh, an app that adds more than one item to the menu, you now automatically get a sub menu. You can't put everything right in the root. Um, and so there's that kind of thing. But I, I was most interested in this notion of the work that they did to simplify Windows 11 and that this was part of it. And I thought that was kind of interesting. And of course, uh, the two things I've noticed since I read this was, one, I, I, I use Windows 10 still because I review computers and so forth. And I got to say the default context menu in Windows 10 is significantly smaller <laughs> than the one in Windows 11. So that's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. And also, and I put a screen to the, I have a link to this in the notes, but I put a shot up on um, Twitter the other day where if you right click like the recycle bin, you it, it still has curved corners, but you get this old fashioned looking menu. But if you right click the desktop, you get the new menu. And it's like, I, if you guys are shooting for consistency, haven't landed it yet. <laughs> you know, like there's still multiple forms of context menus in Windows 11. That's Although, kind you know, that's expected, right? This is a mm. pre release. Uh, okay. Well, you see, think it should be you're giving them benefit. <laughs> Um, yeah, I do. But I, I, I also think they'll pr almost, well, I don't know why I think this, they never do things right, but hopefully they'll <laughs> fix this by the initial release. I mean, look, you gotta be, you gotta be used to inconsistency if you are a Microsoft person these days, you know, it's everywhere, honey, every operating system, they all have it. Yeah, I like hearing windows though. If there's <laughs> <laughs> no, but I see uh, posts on uh, Reddit all the time. Yeah. About, look at this. This Android menu is not centered. Or look at this. My, this Mac, you know, menu looks this way. When you do it, look at it sideways. When you look at it right, front right. ways, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm just. Well. Uh, yeah. I'm just going to yeah. pull up your article here so we can. Recently, I didn't even know what context menus were when I saw this blog post. I'm like, I don't even know what these are. Like, okay. Seriously. Right click. <laughs> Oh, I see. I never so, right click on anything, so I, I've never even seen these menus before. It used to be there was a folder you could put stuff into that would then add it to the context menu. That might be from Windows oh, wow. ninety eight or something. Yeah, they don't. They, they don't no, do that anymore. Yeah, it's yeah. much harder. It's it's same yeah. reason they hid the like you can still find it if you know what the hidden folders are, but they hide the start menu folders because they don't really want people screwing around with that. Right. Uh, because more more often than not, they would delete something by mistake and then complain because it was missing. So this is right clicking on the recycle bin here. Yeah, and, and if you look right at those two menus, the desktop. Yeah, the one on the left is actually a Windows 10 style menu, but with rounded corners, right? Because it's Windows yeah. 11. <laughs> we, did, we did get that far. Right. So it has the old font, which is smaller and kind of a thinner font or whatever. And then, and also, you'll notice there's only one item on there that has an icon. Whereas, if you look at the new Windows 11 yeah, menu on the right, icons. bigger, yeah. bigger font, new font, bigger uh, font size, translucent, uh, background. acrylic, yep, tra yeah. yeah, translucency, and every item has a, a little, um, a little uh, icon there. Yeah. Sigil, sigil. There you go. I just learned that word. Uh, <laughs> had to use it in a sentence. Sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, <laughs> Uh, all right. So, but, you know, complain when they release it and it still has that problem. Oh, I will. I'm, I'm just building it up. I'm just getting ready. This is like um, throwing a couple of punches before a fight. Yeah, I'm just, it's good. Yeah. I'm warming up. Mm. It's just a little shadow, shadow boxing. Yeah yeah. 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 Getting ready. A little drop shadow around a corner box. Yeah, because now what I can do is point back to a post I made in July and be like, I pointed this out in July and you never yeah. fixed it. See? You know. I told you. I don't know. We'll see. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Trust but verify. I don't know. Do you really care that I, I'm not being I'm not being crazy when I'm saying this, but like, do you yeah. care there are little icons and more spacing? And you are stuff? being like, crazy. Yeah. So like, a, you, are, you are being. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm like, wait, are we? Do people even people notice care this? big time? Yeah. Let me tell I'm you what I care. I've about. never noticed if there were icons next to items. I don't notice right. like if a, if they're tighter. No, no. I, I, Is that the I, word? I, I don't know. I don't know. I know. I, I, 
I'm okay with Letting. the new Fisher Price look. Letting. <laughs> Now, what I is, care uh, about is interspacing between characters. Letting is interspacing between lines. Okay. Wow. As you would know if you had, I if you had set I type at any time in your career. I know. I should know those terms, right? <laughs> um, it's okay. It's the 21st century. So yeah. I just want them to be consistent. That's all. You can pick one yeah. style. You can pick any style. I don't care. But make them all the same. That's all. Yeah. And, you know, yep. Windows 10 is, uh, people have published photos of like 15 different context menu styles. I know. You know, bring up Microsoft <laughs> Edge. Uh, in fact, let me make sure I'll just do this right now. <sighs> yeah. By the way, right click on the title bar in Microsoft Edge and you will see a third mm -hmm. type of menu. Uh, it's rounded corners. It looks like the old Windows 10 style, but it's white, not dark when you're using a dark mode. Oh, see, that's bad. People do yep. notice that, Mary Jo, because that burns their yep. eyes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They don't get out much. They spend a lot of time in the basement, and they want their screens no, well, dark. <laughs> or they have physical problems. Or, well, it could be that, too. Yeah. You know, Windows 11 um, File Explorer, uh, when you go yeah. to no, you options don't. and the dialog comes up, it's white. It's it doesn't matter if you're bad in dark when you're in dark mode, mode yeah. and something pops up white because you're really not. Yeah. Yeah, you're like, oh, it's like being blinded yeah. by the light of a thousand suns, you know? Yeah. Yep. And again, we don't see a lot of sun in our business, so. <laughs> right. Anyway, that's what I care about. I care about that stuff. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. Yeah. What happened here? I did something. I did something. I, was like, <laughs> I, turned, you I done? turned that entry into a table, into a I table. think. Huh. Yeah. I don't know how oh, I did that. I don't might, know how to do it. It might be a I Linux really thing. Oh, I, oh, I killed it. There, oh, there I put it back. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, don't know. Well, I just undoed your fine. fix. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm I was, like, what happened there? I was trying to fix I know, I'm it. I'm like, what is that thing? And then I just undid the fix. Okay. Oh, Leo, this is not looking well for you to keep having editing privilege. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I guess now I have to show people what happened because... One again, note. Yeah. Yeah. We're, 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 we're working in a shared document and somehow, I don't know what I did, but I somehow turned this into a table. Sure. That's yeah. what one note does. Yeah. And now I've given away the fact that Microsoft yep. finally admits it's killing the stores for biz and EDU. And because it's a ZDNet story, I'm thinking it's a Mary Jo Foley story. It is. And can I just say, before we start the story. <laughs> I know today, exactly today. what you're going to say. What? You called Everyone, this. Everyone, I called this. A year ago, I wrote this. Everybody on Twitter said, I didn't know what I was talking about. I was crazy. Where was I getting my information? It was obviously wrong. And today... It has been announced. Oh, you're so clever. <laughs> well, I, I guess Guys, the bigger issue, though, is why are you such a liar? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, how do you sleep at night? <laughs> no, and so I guess I shouldn't even have been surprised when we knew Microsoft was creating the new Windows Store for Windows 11, and they wouldn't comment on, so what happens to the store for business and the store for education? That was kind of the sign right there, right? Like, uh, we don't really want to talk about that yet. So today... They snuck out a blog post and said, by the way, in the first quarter of 2023, we will be getting rid of these stores. So these stores, Store for Business and Store for Education, are these specialty stores that Microsoft set up for IT pros and for education administrators to be able to curate and manage their own set of apps for their users, right? So you, you as the admin, can see, like, I want my users installing this, I don't want them installing this, and set up a library of things that people could pick and choose from. So I, a lot of IT pros really liked it, and they used it. Um, but Microsoft is now saying, because of the way we're restructuring the store and we're letting all kinds of apps in, Win32.net, UWP, everything's in there, PWA, pick your acronym, it's in the store. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that you'll be able to use Microsoft Endpoint Manager or an Endpoint Management product of your choice coupled with Package Manager. And you'll be able to do basically the same thing, curate your own set of apps um, yeah. as an admin. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, those stores are going away. Um, up until they do go away, you can keep using them. Um, if somebody has an app that they installed through one of these two stores on their managed device, they can keep using it even after the stores are killed as long as they don't uninstall the app. Once you uninstall the app, that's it. Yeah. I think you're putting Paul to sleep. I know. Dude, Sorry. come on. Stop this is a chapter of when... Paul. You better listen. You better be listening. Better this is a listen. chapter in the field guide, buddy. <laughs> right here. I, I, I was listening. I'm just tired. <laughs> it's not... 
Once he it's heard Microsoft you. Endpoint Manager, he was like, oh, that's me and Xbox, uh, right? Like, yeah. As long as you don't bring up SQL Server, we're going to be fine. Uh. I did not. I did not mention SQL Server. But yeah, I, I just felt like I'm just tooting my own horn right now. But yes, I was correct, people. The stores did for education and business. Guess going this, or away. did you get a tip? No, I had a tip on this. I Guys, when I put something out and say it's going to happen, I have it. Like, it's not right. me just throwing it out there like, oh, maybe, who knows? Let me just put that out <laughs> I there. I never, see it what could happens. happen. <laughs> I never doubted you. It could happen. No, yeah. no, no. No. Okay, good. But, you don't put like a card so in your head you know. and kind of read it and <laughs> carnage. No, I got. One guy said on Twitter to me today, but why did they take so long to announce this? And I said, well, they didn't think I was going to leak this a year ago. Like they yeah, were not yeah, planning yeah. It's to not, Right. It's it. not like it was on the cusp of being announced. <laughs> it's, right. Well, they, right. they had to get package manager in place. They, they did. Had to yes. get the new store yeah. infrastructure in place. So it's, I get, it took, yeah. things always take yeah. longer than people think they're going exactly. to. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <sighs> I can't get rid of this table. That's me. That's me on Discord. Whoever just put that up, Beyonce doing a little hair flip. That's oh, me right now. Yeah, if I had hair, yeah, if I had hair, yeah, I would be flipping it be right flipping, now. Flipping the I can see every <laughs> lock of hair in your head. Yeah. You clearly have hair. You can. I told you. you can. I told you. So that, you know that's good and bad, right? When if you have any little thing wrong with you, you'll be like, oh, they could see this little mark. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. At least you knew that was Queen B. That's good. Except I did. Oh, I know her well. Oh. I love Beyonce. Yay. And she does do that flip well. Who doesn't love yeah. Beyonce? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> and who doesn't love animated GIFs in a podcast? Exactly. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> and, and, and by the way, congratulations to one Paul Therott. <laughs> <laughs> who just recently got the office visual refresh. It's noellook.com yes. refresh, I can tell you that. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. No, okay. What do you think? I, 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 it, it's fine. Um, it's not <laughs> dramatically different. I, I Honestly, I think the big thing here that is 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 great is the, the fact that it kind of maps to your Windows 11 theme. Um, but, you know, I hope you like rounded rectangles because, my God, it, <laughs> the whole thing is like... <laughs> Rounded rectangles. Um, I told you this, didn't I? When I yeah. when you were making a big deal of it, I'm like, yeah. So it has rounded corners. You're like, it has more than that. And I was like, listen, yeah, if you think it. I'm going to go on the Mary Jo is right tour right now, you're, you're mistaken. <laughs> Come on, man, join in. Everyone's everyone's joining in. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's it, you can't really you can't really see this in the shots at all because I didn't take a screenshot of this. But if you were to mouse over like the are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> Give her a new camera, and she just can't stop. The hair flip. <laughs> Got to do it. Got to do it. <laughs> it's it's weird. Uh, the title bar is humongous now, and uh, with, like when you mouse over the close button, it's like this. Well, why is that? Button. Is that it's not... they've 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 integrated everything into the title bar? Uh -huh. Like all everything you see at the top of the app is like the title bar. But whatever. I mean, it's it's fine. It's fine. It's. Not the ribbon. They didn't put the ribbon in the no, title No, no, above, above the ribbon. Above the ribbon. What is it about Microsoft? They don't want actually you to have any space to type. What they're really, <laughs> they really want to just put controls well, all over the screen. Yeah. Well, that's why I minimize the ribbon, right? Um, yeah. I want as much room as I can have. Yeah. And that's, that's why, why Mary Jo asking, uses Notepad. Right. Exactly. I want the simplified ribbon. I want a simplified ribbon. Yeah. Just give me a clean sheet of paper like we used to have. I can roll it into the typewriter. <laughs> Start typing. Yeah. Make it What's shuffle. wrong with that? Nothing What's wrong, wrong with, with that. that. <laughs> Nothing, but the Microsoft gives you in Word a sheet of paper that's like, you know, eight and a half by three, <laughs> yeah. you know. I, re True. I remember when the ribbon first came out, David Pogue opened all of the ribbons at once. Oh, man. Yeah. And all you had was like this postage stamp sized <laughs> square you could type in. Right. But man, you had oh. control. You had the power. I was always and still am team hater of team ribbon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I understand why it. they did the ribbon. I really do. No, I, I get it too. I get it yeah, too. But but it's like a lot of things. I just I don't I don't need it. I don't. I just yeah. get it out of the way. Well, real writers, as opposed Here to people who write business documents, <laughs> real writers yes. want to see the writing. 
You know, yeah. it's yeah. not about, oh, I want to format that and pick me. Exactly. But yeah. Business documents is all about, you know. No, I always tell people, that, look, I'm, I'm inarguably a professional writer. I use like 11 features in Word. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't need the vast majority of stuff that is in this yeah. product. Stephen King uses one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, actually, I think, I think he, I use one. he uses the search and replace <laughs> that takes out all the adverbs. And he's done. Yeah. That's it. Right. Yeah. right. Uh, let's take a little break. I want to ask you, Mary Jo, about edge computing. You know what edge computing, right, is. I the, do. Yeah. This is the future, isn't it? I'm told. It is. IoT. Um, yeah. Uh, the, the idea is... Uh, you know, in the early days, we had one big computer down the hall. <laughs> it was the opposite of the edge. It was like the, the epicenter. Yeah. And then everything was like satellites around it. Then we got a PC on every desktop. That was pretty cool. But computing power is moving out to the edge. And frankly, it's moving to the cloud. And if you're going to be doing edge computing and you want to do it right, you need to know about our new sponsor, Akamai. A-K-A-M-A-I. I think everybody knows the name Akamai. In fact, when I talked to these guys, I said, you, you, know, you don't have to explain to our audience who you are. They're, they're the best, probably the best known in the business. The world's largest distributed edge compute platform. Uh, they've been doing it for longer than anybody else. They have the best technology. If you want to deliver extraordinary customer experiences and run code at the edge, Akamai is the choice for you. Ten times the locations of the nearest competitor. That number alone is just mind-boggling. 4,000 locations. You're always closer to your end user with Akamai. And, and you know, that's great. That significantly cuts down on latency. Akamai is really all about improving your customer's experience as well as yours, but your customer is going to get the content, the apps, the sites, the video they need without lag, interruption, or latency, even during unexpected traffic spikes. Because, you know, the Internet is not a consistent, placid sea. <laughs> it is coming and going and constantly changing. But with Akamai, you're prepared for spikes in demand. You can optimize resources to give your customers the best experience possible and you could do it on a dime instantly you'll be amazed at akamai's unparalleled performance uh, you'll always be one network hop away from 85 percent of the world's internet users that's really the most important point point. Four thousand locations puts you one network hop away from almost everybody that's huge and when it comes to scalability, man, the application architects will get the flexibility to scale enterprise applications with Akamai's edge workers. Edge workers means your development team can focus on building. You let Akamai take care of the challenges of scaling globally. Again, computing at the edge, done right. And because Akamai empowers you to deploy serverless code at the edge, you won't experience the headaches of increased traffic at origin or the overheads that go with it. It's all out there. <laughs> Akamai gives you the power to innovate right at the edge. Your logic, your functions, they're all deployed and active at the nearest point to your end user. Hmm. Again, one hop away from 85% of the internet. That gives your users the fastest end user experience everywhere in the world. You get low latency access to data for custom code at the edge. They can even optimize your API traffic delivery for edge applications. Cost? And I think this is where... I think Akamai has a really important message because I always assumed, okay, that's the high price spread. That's the premium product. It's the best out there. It's got to be the most expensive. Nope. Even with its unrivaled intelligence, performance, and scalability, Akamai is comparatively priced. And in fact, they do some things to make it more affordable. Limits are set per request. So that's really nice because your workload will scale no matter the size of your user base. You don't, have to, you don't have to worry about that. And being serverless means you'll see decreased overhead at the origin. That's really important. I know you know Akamai. I know you know their reputation. They're trusted by the biggest brands in the world. You're getting 10 times the locations of the competitors. You're getting the fastest experience available. I want you to find out more. A-K-A-M-A-I dot com slash W-W. Uh, you can learn about edge computing there. You can actually ask questions. They've got great engineers ready to answer all your questions. And I think you're going to be really pleased when you see how competitive the pricing is. So if you've been like me, saying, I, I don't think I can afford the best, you can. 
you can get it. Build closer to your end user with Akamai, the world's largest distributed edge compute platform. They want to let you know they're there for you. Akamai.com slash WW. Learn more right now. Akamai.com slash WW. Don't forget to use that address so that we get credit. You could just go to Akamai.com, but go to the Akamai.com slash WW so they know you saw it here. Akamai, thank you, Akamai. Welcome uh, to Windows Weekly. Um, Can Akamai help me get rid of this table thing that's in my notes for some reason? <laughs> Sorry, I did that. I can't get rid of it either. I'm undoing. I don't know. So I have I have it opened in two places. That's probably sure. part of the problem. Oh man, the I'm sink sorry. opens. No, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's we're past that point. I know. Right, we're on another section. Forget See, about Mary it. See, Mary Jo doesn't even notice it because she doesn't notice stuff like that. But I can't. I just hone in on no, it. No, it's driving me crazy too. I saw it and I'm like, oh, there's this box there. Who cares? Big deal. Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe I. Oh, <laughs> Paul's re literally retyping as we speak. He is. He's trying to the fix note it and just going to delete Look, that whole it's table. It's just bugging him so much. You got to get. You got to get the it. link there, Paul. Don't forget. Oh, I guess, can't don't worry. Leave it. You get that link. Paste that on top. He can't leave it. <laughs> he can't leave it alone. It's so funny. Now, now watch Leo press oh, the yeah. tab button. Yeah. <laughs> just screw just it over. up again. Just destroy the whole thing. Yeah, I'll let, I'm not going to touch it. Although, oh, I made something else into a table. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? Oh, there it is. Alrighty. That's a cute if, little something. You've never collaborated on a document. Uh, yep. You will. Bob, I'm just going to... Bob, Bob. Bob, 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 Bob. Stop touching the key. Bob, Bob. Put, put, put your hands in the air, Bob. Put your hands in the air. Stand away from the mouse. Put your hands where I can see them. <laughs> Show me your hands, Bob. <laughs> Uh, um, so Windows 365 <laughs> happened, by the way, while I was gone. This is the thing I was waiting yes. for for the last three years. Yep. And they took the <laughs> time I was on vacation. Um, Micah, right, thank right. you for filling in for me. I really appreciate it. And people love it when mm -hmm. Micah's on here because he's got the enthusiasm. Good. He's yeah. not Good. like you and me, Paul. Jaded, right. bored, cynical. cynical. <laughs> he's sure. excited about this stuff. Sure. Um, are you, is Windows 365 this, you know, this new product, is it what we thought it would be, Mary Jo? Are we excited about it? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. The branding isn't what we thought. We definitely thought they were going to call it Cloud PC, and then they right. announced it as Windows 365 and said, but you can use that service to go to your PC in the cloud, which we call the Cloud PC. I'm like, oh, oh. God. But okay. there's a reason I think they want to call it <laughs> Windows 365, because it compares to Office or Microsoft exactly. 365. Oh, and it's literally yes. Windows. It's, it's a not like you have an Windows. You don't have an option of other OSs. Yeah, it's right. Windows. It's a, a no. subscription right. Windows. But what the real question mark for me, because this is not new. Other companies do it. Um, yeah. Uh, Microsoft oh, no, no, even Leo, does Leo, it Leo, Leo, it's brand, it's brand new, brand new. I don't know what you're no, talking Microsoft about. Microsoft does it in Azure. <laughs> this is but the right. question is, it's expensive right now. Well, well, okay, so they haven't the disclosed the pricing, right? right? One price, so there's going to be a million SKUs of this thing, probably at least 10, right? Um, wow. Yeah. Okay. The one that leaked is $31 per user per month. So that's not bad. That is, but okay, that's only for virtualized Windows. That's not including Office. That's not including any apps. Okay. That's but just, Office would be potentially another sixty. But it's a year also or kind right? of a low end, low end skew, right? It that's is. the question: how much right. RAM, how much processor, how much storage? Yeah. Right. So um, for the thirty-one dollar, it's two uh, virtual cores, four gigs of RAM, one twenty-eight uh, gigs of storage. Okay. That's the thirty-one dollars per user per month. Okay. So I'm in my mind the calculus that a business owner like me would be doing is, okay, I can buy a, a Dell Inspiron for Vicky yeah. in, the, in the bookkeeping, or I can pay 30 bucks a month, $360 a year. Yeah. So that's a, maybe yeah. half. She can use third, her computer. And she can right. just use her computer or a thin client or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, the, But the problem is that's kind of low end. But then maybe that gives us a starting point. But it I does. think that they have to hit that. They have to kind of, it has to amortize out to roughly equivalent to having the hardware. Exactly. Right. right. You're, that's your calculation, right? You're yeah. like, okay, what yeah. if I buy a bunch of cheap PCs, but I give the people more expensive capabilities I buy Chromebooks. through the yeah. service? I buy a couple oh, hundred. It'll work Chromebooks. with Chromebooks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it will. And yeah. then, and then, I'll saves me on management. You know, IT. Right. So yeah. um, I know I'm going to save some money. So I got to figure that savings. 
I got to figure out the Chromebook cost, and then I got to yeah. figure out, well, does this make sense compared to buying yeah. a whole PC? Right. right. Because the highest end skew of this thing, I mean, if you have somebody who has a really low end PC, but they want to access the highest end, the highest end that they showed us so far is eight virtual cores, 30... Uh, 32 gigs of RAM, 512 okay. gigs of storage. Okay, right? that's pretty good. And, okay, and they're saying yeah. that could be for software developers, engineers, content creators. Not, like they say, if you if you yeah, have but how much is that? Ninety nine a month. I mean, right? We, we don't know about? how much that is. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, and then and then it's so a couple of things. So it's, it runs in any browser, right, or any competent browser. Yeah. Right. right, so there's, you can run it through a browser or a local RDP client, um, okay. which gives you more capabilities and more functionality if you go that route. More um, security, probably. Um, and you could, and the the real advantage is, I, for my editors, for instance, they can yep. work here, yep, yeah, and then they can go home and uh, pick up right yeah, where they left off. Right? Exactly. Right. right. Yep. The 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 poor version. Well, no, that's it's actually still pretty good. I mean, I I think when you add um, OneDrive to the mix and you have different computers and you can bring bring yeah. up the documents you were just working on, that's really cool. But having your mm -hmm. actual environment just be not duplicated, but just re it's it's the same environment. I mean, you're just bringing it up on whatever device you happen to be using. Yeah. It's that's that's pretty neat. There's I mean, an, there's is. another market, probably not one Microsoft worries too much about, mm -hmm. but people with Macs. Oh yeah, Mac is yeah. supported. Yep. Which they, means they I can, because, you, you know, the new M1s really, uh, it's going right. to be a question mm -hmm. mark about how you're going to run Windows. But this is, this is the other way. This right. is the right, and this yeah. is not even emulation. This is native, right? That's yeah. right. And there's a native uh, RDP client for Microsoft mm -hmm. for the Mac. There is. Yep. I like that. I'm, you know, that might yeah. be yeah. how I run Windows going forward for me. Well, so here's the, here's the catch, right? Um, this is not for consumers at all. Um, right. to, to use this, you have to have licensing rights and a subscription to oh. something called Windows 10 E3, uh, Enterprise Mobility and Security E3, or oh. Microsoft 365 F3 E5. You know, like, it's not for it's an enterprise product. Uh, normal people. Yeah. It's yeah. an enterprise for now. product. I mean, I, I think that changes. Exactly. Right? So they've been quoted as talking about this as an education product, which they didn't yep. announce any education. And also small, and small businesses. Yep, and small businesses and, and enthusiasts. Consumers. I think the enthusiasts no, would, might want this. Scott Manchester, who's the head of engineering for this product, said in a couple interviews, and we're thinking if there is demand by consumers, we'll make this yeah. work for consumers at some point. Yeah. In it's well, the future will. of computing, if you ask me. Yeah. I know you said that. No, my my contention and Mr. <laughs> Wonderful, aptly named in our chat room, says, well, <laughs> but how is this more secure? Well, because... <laughs> I don't have to be a seeker. It's right. always yep. patched. It's always up to date. I don't have to do anything. Right. Uh, None of your right. data is on your device. It's yep. all in the cloud, right? I mean, um, we're going to trust Microsoft to keep it secure. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 They're professionals, and they're almost always going to do a better job than yeah. even a savvy amateur. Right. Yeah. I think. I think so, too. That's why I, you know, I, I store yeah. my password vault in the cloud uh, instead of uh, by myself, some people say, "Well, I'm going to keep my vault on my yeah. on my uh, a floppy Dropbox disk in your <laughs> you know, front <laughs> pocket." And I figure, you know, <laughs> if, you're, if you're Bitwarden, or yeah. you know, you know what you're yeah. doing, you're going to secure yeah. that uh, yeah. better than I can. Yeah. Uh, one one hopes. Yeah. Yes, you would hope. Um, and then you know, any kind of compliance um, processes that your organization has, or any any kind of business requirements, that's automatically just going to be applied and you don't have to worry like, oh, am I looking at a document oh, I shouldn't nice. be looking at? Oh, right? that's huge. You know? yeah. yeah. So they basically are managing this. I mean, IT still plays a big role in managing this if they want to, but Microsoft's doing a lot of the heavy lifting. And the idea of this service was to make it easier. Right now you can do this through Windows Virtual Desktop, which got renamed to Azure Virtual Desktop. But that's not for like normal people. That's like you really got to be a high-end enterprise. You got to really know what you're doing. You are paying for the Azure services that you consume. And this is just meant to package it up, make it um, more available in a better way, in a cleaner way, in a simpler way to everybody in business. That's the idea. Right. And I think 30 bucks for the PC you described, which is really low end, is about right. It is. Yeah. That's $360 a year. I think that's... That kind of makes sense. It's going to have to be cheaper yeah. for consumers, right? Well, there's yeah, going to be would, different categories of users. 
you know, I think I would be the kind of casual user that would just like having Windows in a browser tab. And I'm doing see, what I'd like stuff. to see is um, th them let you subscribe to some number of apps. You know, I don't need the desktop environment, but right. I want the app an app right. to come down. Yes. You know, that kind of thing. Right. Yeah. So we'll see. So, yeah, we don't know. Yeah. We don't know yet. The, There's all sorts you know of ways what? to we, slice it. And you can virtualize. A lot of, I saw a lot of people thinking you can only virtualize Office and Microsoft apps. No, your own apps can be part of this because you're virtualizing your whole desktop. So yeah, if you have, yeah. yeah, if you have an app running on your desktop and you have the licensed rights to it and you've bought it, it will run on the service automatically, right? It, that Microsoft said the ISVs don't need to do anything to make it yeah. work. It should just work. But you'd need it um, then to be running it on a Windows machine, which is kind of weird. Do. Why yeah. would you do this if you already have a Windows machine? Well, <laughs> for those security reasons you just mentioned, because you have yeah. maybe a personal machine, you don't want your company managing it as an individual, which is one of those things uh, you could do. Yeah. Your company may not be sophisticated enough to do that anyway. They might, you know, but this is a way just to have something that's secure up in the cloud. You can still hit apps or the entire desktop environment yeah. from your own computer. Yeah. But when you close that window, you're, it's your computer again. Like you've, mm -hmm. nothing has Love that. Yeah. come to your computer. Yeah. You don't have to worry about Love it. Love that. Yeah. 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 I, I honestly think this is the future of computing. But yeah, they're going to solve a few things for consumers yeah. first, right before they make yeah. it a consumer. The service. biggest problem is the name, you know, and I it agree that it's is. OK, it only because there's a history to it, you know, there and is. that when Office 365 came out and Microsoft 365 became a thing, people have been saying for years, oh, it's only a matter of time. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to make you pay for Windows every month. That's how it's going to yep. work. And <laughs> it is it is going to be one of the ways it works, right? It's not going to replace yeah. Windows as a locally installed operating system or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be another option. I sure. think they're not making you... Th I think the way to think of it is not that you're paying for Windows. You're paying for the hardware. And Windows comes yeah. on it. Sure. You're paying for the service. Yeah, um, right. right. And, and Windows is free, just as it would mm -hmm. be on your PC... It, exactly. it comes along for the ride, yeah. but instead of buying a heavy-duty PC, you're, you're yeah. doing a thin client and the PC's in the cloud. And mm -hmm. that's yeah. why Stadia and xCloud, these gaming services, make sense. Um, yeah, for sure. For sure. And I think they're just the toe in the water for what eventually will be a lot. Well, the up, it's the upgrade situation that's so interesting. You know, like a game service, they could upgrade the resolution or the quality of the graphics or whatever it is. And you don't have to do anything. You just, that day you sign into your web browser or whatever, and you just get it. And that's what's going to happen here right. as well. There's the last mile problem. People in the chat room are saying, mm -hmm. well, what are you going to do if you have crappy internet? Well, you're not going right. to do this. That's uh, the point. This is not replacing anything. It's, a, it's right. additive. Right. They're working on offline access, they said. Um, I mean, I don't know how. Somebody's so got to work on getting come, better internet access in the U.S. We have. I, I keep yeah. ruining my tip, access. but one of the, the other session I recommend watching from Inspire is the Windows 365 session. And one of the things that's interesting about it is the presenter shows that, that well, he says, I believe he says, we kind of optimize this for like 20 megabits you know download okay, speed that's, right that's in spring, uh, which yeah. is not particularly high right but you know even here in rural pennsylvania i can get 300 um but he said you know it's interesting when you're on this thing you're in the data center so he did an internet speed test and it was like a thousand megabytes <laughs> you know, like yeah. it was like really because yeah. you're getting their speeds right yeah. and yeah. that kind of yeah. thing oh. helps a little bit with when you think about latency or lag mm -hmm. or whatever mm -hmm. yeah because you're um, just streaming the pc yeah to your desktop so it's, but the, it's you're, you're, but you're if, also if getting you're, the, you know, their connection, which yeah. is a little bit better oh. than yours. <laughs> a little bit better than yours. Good point. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. if you're downloading that, a big file, or yeah, uploading a big it. file. Oh, it's going to be it's, it's going to be everything that five G promised, <laughs> yeah. but didn't okay. deliver. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a yeah. really good point. You're you know? just streaming the session. You're not. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. really a good point. And twenty gig, twenty megs is probably plenty for that. Yeah. And latency is not an issue for desktop computing. It is for gaming, and they're solving it for gaming. But it's much less an issue for desktop mm. computing, right? You don't. Yeah, well, if you can figure out gaming, then th this kind of thing is easy. Easy. I know. Yeah. I want to see, like, you know, they talk about AV, uh, AV capabilities and Teams, and how will that really look in this kind of service? You know, you're right. doing a chat. That's um, what think people they ask too. Really, it out. <laughs> yeah. How do I? What if I? Yeah. I want to. Yeah. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have a webcam connected to the device I'm using. I'm yeah. gonna use a microphone. How does that work? You know, mm -hmm. we we we're gonna have to find out. I don't know. Yep. Well, the microphone will be in the cloud. The microphone. <laughs> just yell. Yeah, you have to speak up. Speak up. Speak up. Cloud mic. 
All right, what's all this about 21H2 then? Oh, you yes. thought Windows 11 was good, Leo? Wait until you hear about this. No. So we knew this was going to happen, right? In addition to launching yeah. Windows 11 this fall, Microsoft's going to also have a 21H2 update to Windows 10. They acknowledged... <laughs> <laughs> they acknowledge that it's going to be what we thought, a very sm another small update delivered through an enablement package. So it feels like a cumulative update if you're on the latest version of Windows 10 and you upgrade to it. There's like three new features um, in their list of what's going to be in it. Almost nothing. Um, what's in it? WPA3 H2E standard support <laughs> for Wi-Fi security. I don't even know what those things mean. Um, Windows Hello for Business support for simplified password deployment models. GPU compute support for WSL and Azure IoT Edge on Linux on Windows eFlow deployments. They're all so, like super, super minor things, right? <laughs> from the perspective of a user or from the perspective yeah. of a person who maybe has written a book about Windows 10, what I saw here <laughs> yes. is nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing new. Yeah. Exactly. So, good. Yeah. Uh, what else about there? It's all. This is also going to be when they launch an enterprise uh, long-term servicing channel version of Windows 10. Will be in, right. in uh, alongside 21H2. They already told us that earlier, but w they reconfirmed that. Um, they won't say if this is the last version of Windows 10. They aren't saying. Will there? People are asking. Will there be 22H1? And they're not saying. Um, my guess is this is the last, but I don't know that really? for a fact. So I would say yeah. I would guess that there's going to be more, and that they will just be inconsequential. Yeah, yeah. just tiny ones I mean, from why, now on. Well, be, that's well, all. they're, they're going to be security doing security patches. Yeah, anyway. why not? Uh, yeah, you know, they have to do security yeah, still, yeah. Yeah. but yeah, uh, they but should just move Windows wise, 10 to the same one year thing as Windows 11 and just have a version. It doesn't matter, you know. Yeah, yeah, I know that would be. I think people would like that. Um, <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, Common and so sense. it's being tested starting this week um, by people who are in the release preview channel who got moved from the beta channel by Microsoft because their PCs couldn't meet the requirements for Windows 11. Um, right. I saw some people saying, why did I get moved to another ring? And that's why, I guess, because you didn't meet the requirements for Windows 11. So now you're going to test 20. Uh, Windows 10 21H2. <laughs> this, is, um, this is even worse than A-B <laughs> testing. It's like, hey, you know that exciting new thing we have? Yeah, you're not yeah. testing that. Yeah. You're going to test this other thing. <laughs> it's like, but yeah. I didn't I did sign up for that. Thing. I yeah. want yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, well. Oh, well. That's it, though. There's not a lot to say about 21H2. Mm -mm. Okay. Okay. And, but that's uh, good. I think everybody will be happy about that. IT will be very oh, happy. who's like, going to oh, complain? <laughs> You're not going to disrupt my life? Oh, yeah. thank you, Microsoft. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh, yep. how nice of you. I yeah. appreciate that. I mean, you're not getting rounded corners. I just, I don't know how anyone deals with that. <laughs> you know that just old... Just if you can't, I know. That yeah. old context disclosure. menu, you're getting it. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> I hope you like 17 different kinds of context <laughs> menus because you're using Windows 10, baby. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's get to the security uh, thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the nightmare continues uh, with the Prince Spooler problem, right. yes? Right. Yep. I think we're up to mm -hmm. five exploits now. Oh, yes. so five now. So when I wrote this, there were three. Um, yeah, probably. And yeah. they're not fixing it very well is what I'm It sounds like they can't, to be honest yeah. with you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so all you can do here is turn off the sprint. Well, you have to disable it first and then... Um, turn off the print spooler and prevent it from restarting. And when you do that, you can't print, but you know what? You're safe. It's kind of like, <laughs> if you want to be really safe, unplug the internet and it will never be hacked. Um, you'll be fine. Gosh. So you the know? patches, the even the out-of-band patch, the, they're, they're not enough. It's still a problem. Yeah. Yeah. And how big yeah. a problem is it? Is it a remote code execution uh, level issue? I believe so. Print Nightmare, if I'm not mistaken, required some kind of local access. You have to, to be on the network. network. I, I believe. Yeah. I don't know about the more recent ones, but I believe you had to be on the computer. Yeah. Uh, mm. I think. Yeah. So that's not so bad. It's not like somebody can, from outside right. your network. Right. Right. Um, cause problems but it's also not the only problem so just today microsoft acknowledged uh, something that a security researcher had found which th that person didn't 
could, was looking at this thing. This can't be what I think it is, but uh, the security accounts manager, Sam, um, has a vulnerability where, again, actually you have to, you the, the system has to have been compromised in some other way for this to happen, but you gain access to this folder that's used for uh, volume shadow copy backups and uh, you get system privileges. So that means you can install programs, uh, delete data, create new accounts with full, you know, ad admin user rights. You can do the whole thing. So it's been a good week or a good month or whatever you want to say for uh, Microsoft security and Windows and whatnot. But you do uh, have to have ex physical access yes, to the machine or, or an exploit that got you into the machine in the first place. But that's, that's what right. happens often is these exploits are stacked to. Uh, yep. Yep. Yeah. So. It's like coupons. You can stack them. Stack them. And um, <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> As I wrote in my article about this, if you want to feel good about yourself, um, there were two uh, escalations of privilege uh, vulnerabilities released or uh, found in Linux this week as well. So, you know. Yeah, the Linux one is, is hysterical. Yeah. You have to create a million subfolders. <laughs> right. <laughs> Literally, one million. Uh, and actually, in a way, it's a testament to the hardiness. I was going to say, is this like a Linux. like a, a really <laughs> random, or not a random, but an extreme stack it's, overflow it's problem? An extreme or overflow. Yeah, uh, and funny. the fact that the file system doesn't die, yeah, uh, is impressive. Uh, See, we're wor we're worried about different looking <laughs> context menus, and these guys are I talking know. about like a million sub <laughs> folders. Yeah, but um, okay. the context menus are so different. I just I can't keep highlighting that enough. It's just I'm unacceptable. Glad you care. It's <laughs> unacceptable. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Field guide to context menus coming soon. I think you should do a field guide on how to create table entries in Microsoft One because you've apparently done it again, or is it me? I don't know. Is don't it know me? Who did that. I don't know who did that. I did that. not. I did not. I don't even know me. how to do that. I don't even know how to do that. I made another one. <laughs> <laughs> it, it literally has appeared with no <laughs> attribution whatsoever. I. Editing privileges revoked. <laughs> exactly. It, it, it does seem to be, though, it's related to the fact that both of those sentences ended with a word all in caps. Mm. Oh, no, I added Y. Oh, you did that? Yeah. No, that was okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was my, my that, contribution. Okay, okay. Mm. So if I press another tab, I can go, yeah. why not? Yeah, you okay, can, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Oh, now I can add another oh, line. What's happening? Oh, we're really in trouble now. I'm going to have to start a new notebook. I don't think I could ever use this again now. I, I think it has to be redone. <laughs> yeah. OCD? This, we have notes going back to 2011. Oh, and my it's, God. It's ruined. Uh, well, there's got to be a way to fix that. <laughs> Some sure there is. I can take away my changes. Yeah, but, oh, there you uh, go. I can't take away yours. I don't know how to fix this. Well, I, actually, I, I could just... Guys, you know what? It doesn't matter. Do <laughs> it doesn't hey, we care about them. these things, Mary Jo. When the, when the context do. menus don't match, <laughs> that could be a problem. Guys. Confusing. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, laugh because it's, I, I don't disagree with anything he just said. He laughs so, because he's because crying. So because true. he doesn't want to cry. He's crying inside. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Microsoft is detailing its move to the four-week edge release cycle. Yeah. So, by the yes. way, speaking of which, today is July 21st. Yes. Edge 92 should appear any day now. I think July 22nd, if I'm not mistaken, is the day or the first day it could happen. Chrome just came out with Edge 92. But starting with Edge 94, which I guess will be in, it's hard to say, is it in 12 weeks Eight weeks, ten weeks, it's somewhere in there. Um, they're moving to a four-week stable release cycle, right? And then now they're adding a new, uh, what do they call them, channels? 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 I think channels? So the key here is they're not following the Chromium releases anymore. They're doing their own thing. No, well, they they are, but they're all because Microsoft has so many business customers. They're also offering a new release cycle oh. for those businesses that. So want not everybody every, gets that. Yeah, yeah. So most consumers will see a new version. Well, consumers will see a new version every four weeks, soon, starting soon, uh, with Edge ninety four. Businesses will have the option to opt into an eight week extended stable release cycle that will. Um, line up with the even number of releases, you know, with Edge 94. So Edge 94, Edge 96, Edge 98, et cetera. And uh, you'll still get security updates, but you won't get the feature updates uh, until eight weeks. So There's no new information here, by the way. They announced this a couple months ago, 
but now they're just saying, yeah, we're still doing this. Um, it's coming. Yeah. So just get ready. I think we, we are on the cusp of Edge 92. It should be any day now. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I mean, it's so important that you update the browsers the minute mm -hmm. there's an issue, right? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And Edge is pretty good about that. They'll give you a little pop-up. They'll tell you, you know, you need to do it. And if you just close it and reopen it the next time you run Windows or whatever, it will happen automatically. You don't have to, It's not like it's going to... It won't not do it. Like, you will get the upgrade. Okay. Yeah. Clear as mud. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's take a, another little tiny... <laughs> fiesta or siesta, uh, depending on how you feel about advertising. And uh, <laughs> when we come back, we're going to talk about the good stuff, the juicy wow. stuff. Wow. NATO. But <clears throat> sure. yeah. first, <laughs> a word from Worldwide Technology and HPE. Worldwide Technology. We love them. In fact, I think we're trying to set it up so we can go out and... Uh, because I've been talking about the Advanced Technology Center for so long. And uh, I want to go. We went out there last March, right before COVID. And uh, I think we're thinking, Lisa and I, maybe we go out with a camera crew in September. I just want to get footage of this because you, you won't believe it when you see it. WWT, Worldwide Technology. It's, it's, a, it's a, all about enterprise uh, uh, technology for your, you know, your business. They're at the forefront of innovation, working with clients all over the world, helping transform their businesses. And the thing, the reason you want a WWT is because you want a company that isn't just a technology company, but it's also uh, understands business, right? That's really important. So they work with you to understand and clarify your business goals, your strategies, and then, then, only then, do they talk about the technologies that can help you move forward. That's, that's how you want to do it. You don't want some guy going in there saying, well, you got to have this and that and the latest thing. You really want to make sure they're all in alignment, your strategy, your goals, your business, and the technology you use to get you there. At the heart of WWT, this amazing advanced technology center, it's a research and testing lab. They have half a billion dollars of equipment invested in this lab from leading OEMs. And the best thing about the ATC, I mean, they, 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 of course, they started this originally, and they did it started about a decade ago, so that their own engineers could spin up proofs of concept, could test and try and learn about things, uh, could see how a new technology might integrate with integrate with a customer's older technology, that kind of thing. It's you need that to test it all before you you implement it. Uh, but now. It's available to their customers, which is so cool. They call it Lab as a Service. And you don't have to go to St. Louis. You can do it anywhere in the world, any time of the day or night. The ATC offers hundreds of on-demand and schedulable labs. Uh, talking about HPE, they've got HPE's Primera Storage Lab. So you can take a look at this latest and greatest technology, along with other labs representing the newest advances in every kind of enterprise technology, multi-cloud architecture, security, networking, primary and secondary storage, data analytics and AI, DevOps. Oh, yeah, they're big. It's not just hardware. They're also all about they understand process and they make a lot of effort to really understand the latest processes, things like Agile and DevOps, and, and to implement them themselves in their own business. They're constantly, their executives are constantly undergoing training uh, to, to learn more about how, you know, the, the, the kind of the state of the art in enterprise technology works. It's really cool. And then, of course, they've got this ATC where they can, you know, spin up all the proofs of concept and cut evaluation time from months to weeks. Well, and you can do the same. You can test products and solutions before you go to market. You can access more than just labs, technical articles, expert insights. There's demonstration videos. There's white papers. All the tools you need to stay up to date with the latest technology, just like they do. It's a, it's a virtual lab that you can access any time in the world, any time of the day or night. And by the way, while you're exploring the ATC platform, you should also check out WWT's events. We did one for them in uh, March. I think I'm hoping we can do another one in the fall. Uh, they have great communities there that you can join, uh, share information with others, learn about technology trends here, the latest research and insights from the WWT experts, and a whole lot more. Look, whatever your business needs, 
WWT can deliver scalable, tried and tested, tailored solutions just right for your strategy. They bring strategy and execution together to make this new world happen. To learn more about WWT, the Advanced Technology Center, to get all those free resources, free, mind you, just, just create a free account at the ATC platform. You can go to WWT, Worldwide Technology, www.com slash twit. That's www.com slash twit. Join WWT and HPE as they transform the world. It's pretty exciting stuff. WWT.com slash twit. Now, let's get to the EU, to NATO, <laughs> to, the, uh, to all the exciting stuff. It's time for politics. Yeah. Well, let's try to keep that out of it. But the, <laughs> the United States, uh, the UK, the EU, and NATO have all formally mm -hmm. accused China of international cyber espionage, cyber, what do we call cyber attacks or whatever, including the uh, attack early this year on Microsoft Exchange servers, right? Which uh, you got to think Microsoft is so happy to be in every headline about this story because really what it's about is a broader pattern of uh, attacks that the Chinese government and its agents have undertaken over a period of at least a decade. And there's documentation about a lot of these attacks, but of course what everyone focuses on is the Microsoft thing. And it's like, guys, <laughs> it's not just us. Um, Solar Winds, anybody? Nothing. Solar Winds was Russia, um, right? It was the Russian <laughs> yeah, GRU. Yeah, yeah. Uh, these guys, uh, you know, these nation states. Sure. This is this is their well, bread China and butter. China doesn't want to be. They don't want to be one up by Russia. So. <laughs> no, but I think this is this is the future of international yeah, of conflict. It's not war. No one yeah, can afford a yeah. war anymore. But uh, right. and it's not cyber warfare. It's more like espionage. And well, I mean, listen. You start taking down power plants and well, electric could be. grids. Could and, be I mean, warfare. There's, there's, that's true. Th th but they got into exchange because why? Because that's where the info is, right? That's what they want. Right. They're trying to get uh, 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 information about uh, dissidents and you know um, people that are you know anti-China probably, um, but. Yeah, and of course they're also trying to still see uh, still secrets, yeah. right? So they've yeah. gone after like aviation, defense, education, government, healthcare, pharmaceutical, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, I mean, I, it, this is one of those things. I feel like we've been operating under this assumption that this kind of thing has been going on for a long time, and I, I, I guess I'll give them a little credit for just kind of coming out and say, look, I, <laughs> these guys have been doing this, and yeah. this has to stop. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, and and uh, you know, you remember how strongly uh, the president. Uh, spoke to Putin saying, you can't allow this yeah. to happen in, in your country. I imagine the same kind of call with right, President right. Xi, but it's very difficult. Well, those are... guys are going to be very receptive to this message. <laughs> yeah. I don't see the problem. They're sovereign um, nations. Uh, sure. You know, they're going to go, okay, yeah. You knock it off, we'll knock it off. How about that? Right, sure. Mm. You stop pretending that UFOs are aliens and we'll stop doing <laughs> this um, cybersecurity thing. So, you know, it's just... Uh, yeah. Oh, what a mess. We live in a no. kind of <sighs> messy, messy world. Right. Yeah. Um, new Microsoft acquisition. Speaking of security, yeah. yeah. What's this? There, this is uh, today. They bought a company called Cloud Knox, like Fort Knox, kind of Knox Security. So this is something that they're going to be integrating with their other security services, like. Microsoft 365 Defender, Azure Defender, and Azure Sentinel. And the idea is um, it lets you, uh, <laughs> there's so many buzzwords in this, privileged, it lets you do, do privileged access management more easily. Um, in other words, it fits in with Microsoft's all up strategy for identity as being the crux of their security strategy. You can do things like give people who are using Azure Active Directory more granular visibility and monitoring for their clouds, um, better policy uh, enforcement, machine learning anomaly detection. They have some technology around that. So Microsoft's basically buying them. They're going to take all their technology, integrate it in with their services. Now, to me, one of the most interesting things about this is CloudNox has been a really big AWS partner and very vocal AWS partner. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens to their offerings on AWS after this acquisition. Right. That's it. Okay. More more security is good. Always good. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Although right. I'm not sure more security under the same roof is good, but um, you know. 
Microsoft's bought, I think, four uh, security companies this year, or maybe even more than that, just this year. Um, So, yeah. I mean, it's good to see them well-funded for sure. But you also want yeah. independent security companies too. Yeah, yeah. 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 Let's, sure. let's get yeah. as many people in the game as we can. Exactly. All right, Mary Jo. Uh, Hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. She's got she's gotta want to know about this. Okay. I will. I'm wide open no. to it because, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> it's time for Mary Jo Foley's Xbox News. Guys, July is a huge month for Xbox Game Pass. Why is that, Mary Jo? Because it's July and there's 31 days and, like, that means more games per day. Wrong. Okay. Well, first of all, we're almost done with July. So we that's are. True. So we what, are. Are you well, gonna, what are you going to do? Yeah, so Xbox Game Pass, usually twice a month they make uh, announcements about the titles that are coming out for the first half and then the second half. The first half they did it kind of stretched into, you know, the third week. So now they're doing the last... Well, actually, it started yesterday, but the last you know week and a half or whatever. And there's a lot of big games coming. So, biggest one is Flight Simulator, right? This is the the title that launched last fall on um, Windows 10. We've known it's coming to the new Xbox consoles. That's happening next week. In fact, oh, six days from exciting. now. Exciting. Not the yeah. uh, not the Xbox One. You have to have uh, a no, Series just, X. That's right. Series yeah, X Series X and X. Yep. Yeah. So we'll see what that looks like. I'm I'm really interested to see how well those consoles can pull this off because obviously the more power the better when it comes to flight simulator. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, we shall see. You need a lot. Of but it's not just that. Um, some other big games, you know, the Ascent, uh, Battlefield Five, which is coming to cloud gaming, which is interesting because one of the problems with Xbox cloud gaming in particular, but cloud streaming services in general, is latency and lag, and that's a first person shooter. So. Uh, that's going to be something interesting just to test, just to kind of see what that looks like. Um, and then also some remastered versions of some Xbox classics, uh, Crimson Skies, which dates back to the OG Xbox, and then Blinks, which I th- think is a 360 title. I don't remember, but that's kind of a big one. And uh, both of those will also be on Xbox Cloud Gaming as well as uh, on the console. Crimson Skies so a lot is of- like the World War Two flights uh, battles. I think, them, I, think right? it, I think it's World War One. One. Oh, fun! I think. I think. I could be wrong. Actually, I, I, I remember know. playing it. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Chris, where is it? I'm really looking up. It's an alternate 1930s world, so it's 30s. kind of between one and two. Yeah. <laughs> I guess yeah, we'll yeah. call it. Um, yeah. So it's it's. I guess they have like jet like fighters and stuff. Oh, but cool. anyway, that's an old one. So that's good. Mary Jo doesn't care about that. Um, <laughs> something you might care about just a little bit is, I don't know how this happened in the midst of the worst component shortage in the history of God, but Xbox managed to have its <laughs> best ever month, I think it was, for hardware sales ever. <laughs> right? Really? Mm-hmm. And yes, I know. This is according to NPD, um, but so it's US only, but... Um, and by the way, I mean, just to put it in perspective, I think they, and this is by revenues too, um, approximately one-tenth of the revenues that Nintendo earned on the Switch, but double the revenues that Sony earned on PlayStation that month. So Microsoft might be faring better in getting components. I, I, don't, I don't think anyone would believe that Xbox is outselling PS5, but it is interesting that they had an incredible month uh, in June. So, you know, we'll take it where we can get it. And then you might care about this one a little bit, too. Um, This has been confusing. Last fall, Microsoft announced, well, first of all, I should say last year, Microsoft announced something called Direct Storage, which is part of that Xbox Velocity Engine functionality that's in the new Xbox consoles, the Series X and X. And what it basically is, is we're not using hard drives anymore. We're using really fast SSDs, and we're going to be able to do this sustained throughput that just blows away previous generation consoles. And um, then they announced, I want to say, let's say last fall, that they were going to bring this technology to Windows 10 as well. So PC gamers could take advantage of it. Of course, PC is a little different from Xbox because you can do different things on a PC. Xbox is obviously just focused on basically one thing at a time or one game at a time. Um, So it might not be as kind of a strict of a requirement, but a fast, a typical, we'll call it PCIe based, you know, NVMe, SSD should work, blah, 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 whatever. Then they announced Windows 11. And I don't know if you were paying attention to the Windows 11 announcement, but they said direct storage was going to be a feature unique to Windows 11. It was like, oh, I guess it's not coming to Windows 10. But now they're saying, yeah, it is actually. So um, it will be slightly better on Windows 11. And by slightly, I literally have no idea. Like the way they describe this is 
Let me see if I can find this. On Windows 10, games will still benefit from the more efficient use of the legacy OS storage stack. But on Windows 11, this consists of an upgraded OS storage stack that unlocks the full potential of direct storage. That's literally as detailed as this description gets. So it will so apparently be better on Windows 11. Direct storage doesn't have to just be used with games, or does it? Just it does for now. It is a game. It, it is a game's yeah. future. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The idea is just to push stuff out to the screen as fast as possible so you can get going and then it yeah. will kind of cut, kind of cut before you had to sit there and wait for things to load. I mean, it's one of the big problems yeah. with consoles, you know, right. Um, even today it's a little bit of a problem, but on Xbox, this is probably tied to, or sorry, the new Xbox is probably tied to that fast or quick resume feature where you leave a mm -hmm. game, start another game, go back to the first game. It actually pops up really quick. They're able to just, uh, get really good disc throughput. So there's no reason a modern PC can't do this. I mean, we have incredibly fast SSD drives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it, it's, it's the same bus. Is it a different bus? Is it closer? Is it DMA? Well, I don't. Yeah. It's, Did I'd have to go back and look yeah. on, on Xbox. Um, I don't remember. I want to say it's just, see, you get every, you know, it's like Microsoft describes it as super fast SSD storage. And for PC, Users, it's like, well, we have PCIe for whatever it is, NVMe based M2 SSD drives. These all meet the performance characteristics already. Like, we've already had much faster storage on PCs for a long time. So it's not surprising that this is coming uh, to Windows 10 or 11 or whatever. But it's also not surprising that they looked at the console and they were like, well, how can we make this thing better? It's like, well, why don't we use the storage we already have on PCs? Right. Um, right. So I don't think it's particularly special in terms of. You know, you buy any premium PC or laptop, whatever, you probably get something very close to that level of throughput. But on the Xbox, obviously, it's optimized for this one purpose. On Windows, storage is general purpose. It's designed for a lot of different things. And, of course, you have multiple things going on at the same time, whereas on a console, you're typically just playing the game, you know. I'm looking at a slide. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not particularly informative, <laughs> but... GPU supports far higher decompression bandwidths, so um, that's a big deal. CPU savings are significant at next-gen I/O rates, so it's not CPU-driven. I think it's supposed to be about sustained throughput. You know, yeah. like a lot of times when you look at drives, they'll say like peak throughput is some number, and it's like yeah, but you can only hit that for a little while. This is like what can we churn constantly, and it's I, I guess it's. It's actually kind of a differentiator because I think the PS5 still does that peak throughput thing. Like they have better peak throughput than Xbox, but Xbox has better yeah. sustain. It throughput. sounds like I, the reason it's unclear is it's a, it sounds like it's a number of different things all yeah. combined. Oh, together. and it requires special drivers. They have to be certified. Yeah. Uh, in the beginning, your best bet is going to be getting this on a new computer. Over time, this will just become standard. Like, well, it will be something anyone who has a gaming PC can, will be able to do easily. But so you get GPU decompression, <clears throat> you get mm -hmm. batched submission completion calling, which means you don't have to do a whole bunch of little I/O requests, mm -hmm. and storage stack optimizations. That's probably all software, right? Um, and that's that bit is the bit that's going to be different between ten and eleven, right? Windows 11 was built with direct storage in mind. Games running on Windows 11 benefit further from new storage stack optimizations. It'll be there on 10, but you won't get as yeah. much benefit. This, by the way, like. is probably arbitrary. It's one of those things they're going to try to get people to upgrade to Windows 11 just to get the better right. uh, performance. But I, I, come on, these are the same operating systems. There's no reason Microsoft couldn't add this to Windows 10 in the same capacity. It's but interesting. It really uses the GPU a lot, is what happens, and and so that's yeah. a, that's a big deal. That's sure. one of the differences, right? So if you have, I guess, if you have motherboard graphics, you're not going to see the benefits here. You need a DirectX right. 12 yeah, ultimate no, right. supported right. GPU. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you don't get new uh, new uh, storage technologies all the time. Mm -mm. The last major one on the PC was probably REFS, right. you know, Windows 8, right, something right, like that. Right. It's, it's been a while. And uh, did you order a Steam, <clears throat> a steamy no. pile of Steam Deck? <laughs> <laughs> so if you've ever looked at the Nintendo Switch and said, I'd like one, but I want it to be a PC, uh, Valve is going to start selling one this Christmas or holiday season called the Steam Deck, which is a terrible name. Um Four hundred dollars and up—that's a good price point. Although four hundred dollar version is sixty-four gigs of eMMC storage, which is really slow. 
Um, you can upgrade it faster and more storage, NVMe, again, SSD, internal storage. So you could spend as much as $649. Um, AMD Zen 2 CPU and GPU, 16 gigs of RAM. The, the problem with this thing to me, well, there's two problems. Uh, seven inch touchscreen display, resolution of 1280 by 800, which is super low. Um, but that's one of the ways you could get games to play at an acceptable frame rate, I guess. 16 by 10 aspect ratio, that's good. Two to eight bar, two to eight hours of battery life. You, I don't know. <laughs> so obviously the Steam library will be built into it. So if you're a Steam gamer, you have a library of games. These will play on here. Better than it's that, actually, it's a full Arch Linux computer. Yeah, so it's a Linux-based computer. Um, there, Valve is saying you can install Windows on it if you'd like it to run yeah, even slower. PC. So I guess you yeah. can do that. Um, I don't. I, I don't ordered. I ordered. You can't order them. I pre-ordered. Yeah, pre. Yeah, yeah. I got up early. Uh, 7 a.m. Hawaii time to uh, to wow, do that. And nice. Servers crashed right away on me, and that's all sorts of problems. <laughs> By the end of the day, though, I was in the I was in the queue in the for queue. ordering in the third quarter of 2022. Oh yikes! <laughs> which one did you? Uh, which one did well, you? Well, I you know I looked at there was a little leak in their web code, and so you could kind of see. Uh, what was going on, and it looks like the vast majority of people just went with the top of the line. I mean, if yeah. you're going to buy it, might as well get the most yep. performance. Because you can plug in an HDMI cable or maybe a USB-C cable and put it on your yeah, big screen. So I have, uh, so I, uh, for me, uh, the screen's too small. I can't game on something that small. Plus, you got to remember, these are PC games. Right. So they're going to have all the little tiny UI elements. Yeah. It's going to be hard to see. The other thing is, this is, uh, this is, Kind of strange, but if you look at the control, you look at the controls: two thumbsticks, D-pad on the left, the four buttons on the right. It's actually a kind of a PlayStation layout, right? Um, on the Xbox, the D-pad is to the right of the left thumbstick, not to the left. And so this kind of reminds me of the PSP or whatever the second PSP was called that actually had the two thumbsticks. Yeah, um, it reminds me of PF PSP exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and I just I don't know. I think I'm a little. I think my vision and age just precludes me from gaming on this thing. I. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to wait and see what this tur how this turns out, I guess. Um, it's funny because I'm older than you and I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, oh, no, uh, listen, I, I think this is great. I, I will say from an Xbox perspective, this is the game, the portable Xbox, that fans have been clamoring for for years, years and years. Yeah. Uh, this kind of thing. And I don't, well, maybe I do understand why Microsoft hasn't done it. I'm sure Microsoft looked at this and I, actually, uh, Valve probably has the same problems. I mean, it's not like these are big hardware makers, so... They're not exactly getting the best prices on stuff. Yeah, um, and that's this, why it's going to take forever to get. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's interesting. It'll for sure. start coming in December, as you mentioned, but only for the yeah. first handful of people really able to get yeah. one. Yeah, I like my Switch, which is roughly the same, but those games are designed for the Switch. Right, exactly. Big difference. That's the thing. Yeah. Yep. Now we'll see. I mean, one of the things that could happen over time is you know the, we already have this notion of. Uh, device independent graphics for you know applications. I mean, there's no reason games couldn't do this. This is a problem with um, cloud uh, Xbox cloud gaming. You know, you got an Xbox console game and you're blowing it down to a little iPhone screen, and it's like, well, there it is, but I can't see anything because all the little, you know, the text is all like one point. So I don't know. Anyway, I'm interested, but I'm not going to get one, not yet, anyway. Yeah. I've, it's only five bucks to get in line, and then I'll right. decide in a year and a half from now. <laughs> yeah, next July, you'll be like, what's this bill for? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. uh, um, I figure by then right. they'll have worked out the kinks. Yes. All right. I think that the next segment is the what we lovingly call the back <laughs> of the book. The best part of every old computer magazine was the stuff in the back. Yeah, that's the Dvorak page. The Dvorak page. We don't have Dvorak, <laughs> but we do have beer. That's true. So that's the most important thing. And yeah, the classified ads. Kids, right. computer magazines used to have classifieds. Mm -hmm. uh, what's a computer magazine, Daddy? I know. <laughs> it's yeah. funny, oh, I was in a... Leo, speaking of which, you yeah. must know. Do you know Ken Williams, the Sierra Online? Yeah. Uh, all right, so do you, you probably know then that last year he published a book. Yes, Okay, so I just listened to this on Audible. Is it good? And, uh, it's excellent. I'll have to listen. And yeah, and he talks. They had a magazine, and their I whole remember. point, and and they yeah. kept it going until the late nineties. And the whole point of it was, I, we could put ads in the back of magazines like everyone else, but why don't we just speak directly to our customers? You already know they're fans. We can just talk to them. Mm -hmm. 
We're, we would just be way lost. ahead of his time, actually. Yeah, yeah. That's some good, some good stuff. In they that were book. they did those graphics uh, adventure <laughs> games. Yeah, uh, King's Sierra Quest, Line. Police yeah. Quest, Larry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Larry, uh, Leisure Suit Larry, Leisure Suit Larry. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. very popular. Yep. Um, Ken Roberta Williams. Yes. Uh, I'm going to read the book. I did know that that he came out with a book, and I it's called. Um, What's it called? Something about uh, something dreams don't always come true. Or, uh, Let me see if I can find sometimes it. Sometimes dreams come true. Where is it? Let me just look at my phone. Uh, it's called. Uh, oh, so it's Audible. Good. I can get that. I got it on Audible. Not all fairy tales have happy endings. Not all fairy tales have happy endings. I guess that was endings. in the ballpark. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's uh, kensbook.com if you want to know more. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. Back of the book. Right. Sorry. Coming up. Uh, let's start with you, Paul Thorat, and the tip that you have whittled down to practically nothing. Yeah, well, I have two. I have multiple tips and picks. It's kind of a Good. weird week. Um, Good. Yeah, I mentioned already. Uh, there's an ele a Windows 11 and a, a Windows hello, yeah, 365 session at at Inspire. Th these are videos, right? So they're worth watching. If you care about this stuff, you should watch both of these videos. I got some information out of the Windows 11 thing that I don't believe was communicated elsewhere. So I. I thought that was kind of interesting, including that mute thing I talked about. So that's cool. Um, I also just paid for something called just JavaScript, which I previously had beta tested. And it's on sale right now through the beginning of August for $25. So it's not a book and it's not a like a video series, but it's, an, it's kind of an interactive website that helps you get over the hump of learning JavaScript. And the reason it's interesting is because it's not a... JavaScript 1.0, like, you know, this is what a variable is. This is how stuff... Are. It, I think a lot of people who have a little bit of programming experience go to JavaScript and they immediately get lost because, you know, it's kind of a screwed up language. And this guy has a really nice way of putting stuff in a different context to help you learn JavaScript in a meaningful way. And I, I find it... I actually find it to be really helpful. It talks a lot about the different, you know, there's only like seven data types and how most things are the, you know, it just kind of goes on and on. But the line I pulled out I thought was kind of cool that I went, I did a, one of the sessions today was expressions are questions that JavaScript can answer. JavaScript answers expressions in the only way it knows how with values. And I was like, yeah, actually, that is, that's, yes, that's exactly what that is. That's true. Um, so I, I just, you know, if you have I'll any interest. try this because I yeah. have never, you know, I'm a language junkie. Yeah, and I have but JavaScript never, is I just it's hard, well right? away from it. It's yeah. curiously hard because it's so it's a weird combination of unsophisticated and yet actually pretty sophisticated. So anyway, if you have any interest at all in JavaScript, at least look at this. I think the website is probably just just JavaScript.com. If I know, I think is it is. Probably, You're correct, yeah. sir. Yeah, so I found it to be useful. And so you pay, you pay, but then you get access <clears> to a. The lessons, yeah. is that basically... So I guess it's originally going to, or uh, at some point soon, it's going to be $40. That's going to be the actual price. Oh, but right now right it's now. on sale. It's $25. And oh. I thought, you know, 25 bucks, I should. Because I did a few, I think I did the first couple via email when he was kind of testing them. And, uh, or I, I should say, I know I did. <laughs> I, I don't remember how many I did, but um, I, I thought it was good enough. And I went and looked at, you know, the material he had put out. And I said, yeah, you know, this, this, is, this might put this over the top conceptually. I shall try it. It's worth looking at. I shall try it. I'm looking for a, a new language for the upcoming Christmas advent of code. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> you're not going to do Rust? Oh, did you do Rust I, last I've year? Done, no, last year I did Racket. Oh, but racket. Uh, Rust is good. I like Rust. A little verbose. When you're doing mm -hmm. competitive programming. I see. <clears> concise, <throat> you want something. Concision is important. You don't want to spend a lot of time concision. typing. Concision. You don't want to spend a lot of time typing a boilerplate, which Java and uh, is notorious for. And so you're not going to use Swift. Rust UI is here. bad. Yeah, <laughs> no, definitely not use the Swift UI. Uh, JavaScript has a little of that too. Actually, I was going to use Closure, which well, is a lisp. Heard of that. Yeah, it's a list okay. that right that compiles to Java or JavaScript. I think you should go bring back like Ada or just I'll do an APL. Haskell. Yeah, Haskell. You know? The fun thing about Advent of Code. Uh, is that people do it in all sorts of languages, Power BI included? Oh well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, so. I should. What's um, Mary Jo? The who was the Kevin? Who was the CTO of Microsoft? Kevin Turner. Scott. Turner. Kevin Scott. Is it Kevin oh, Scott? The current one, Kevin Scott. Yeah. 
Kevin Scott. So Kevin Scott has a, a podcast that's very good. And I only listen to select episodes because I want to, I just listen to the stuff, I, the topics I care about. He talks about all kinds of stuff. But he inter- his latest episode, he interviews uh, Stevie Batiche. Oh, and nice. uh, yeah, it's, fa- yeah. it's absolutely worth listening to. Uh, Stevie's fascinating. This is a guy who connected, I don't know if you know his background. He <laughs> connected little diodes to insects and got them to control robots when he oh was in school. Oh my God. Yes, that's like this, crazy. It's, cra- it's crazy. Anyway, it's worth. He's that's like also Panos's, worth. but now he's like Panos Panay's right hand man on Surface, right? Steve. Yeah, but he it, technically this guy has been running a, a business within Microsoft for over twenty years that has mm-hmm. to do with it's like a cross discipline thing that's not tied to just a Surface. Mm-hmm. He does it's software, AI, hardware. Oh, cool. That's cool. He's kind of a he's a fascinating guy. It's worth listening nice. to. Anyway, yeah. There's another tip and a I nice guy. And he's, he's a, a great guy. guy. He is. <laughs> he was the guy at uh, the Surface Book launch. I got a hold of him in the press room, and I said, "Stevie, obviously, you didn't. You don't want to have this giant gap when the laptops close. Like a future version, you're going to fix that, right?" And he goes, "Oh, totally." And then this PR person grabbed him and pulled him, and got him out of there. And I was like, "God damn it!" But he, yeah. So anyway, yeah, he's a good totally, guy. Totally. <clears throat> we don't want speaks, pl- don't don't speak plainly to the journalists. Never, it's, it's, never. No. Let's give them nothing they can g- grab a hold of. Yep. <laughs> and now an app pick or two or three. Of yeah, a bully bays, if you will, mm-hmm. of app picks, uh, just because a bunch of stuff just kind of happens. So Chrome 92 is out. Like I said, Edge 92 is coming out any day now. I don't recommend using Chrome 92, but or Chrome, Chrome at all, I should say. Um, but if you are using Chrome, the new version's out. It does have some more privacy protections built into it, you know. I'm sure they're. I'm sure they're not phoning home. Um, DuckDuckGo announced a service called Email Protection, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's a way to uh, kill trackers and email. It's in beta. You have to sign up for a waiting list. I don't know. I assume they're going to charge for it eventually. You get a, an at duck.com email address, which I think is hilarious, by the way. Um, the problem with it is now, of course, you have to use a new address. And the, w- the way this works is you redirect the services you're using to use this uh, duck.com email address, and then it will remove the trackers and forward it to your actual email address, right? So there's a little bit of work involved, but it's a universal way to do it. It might be worth looking into. I'm not, I even, I, well, I'm sorry. I signed up for the waiting list. I have, I've not gotten in yet, but sounds interesting. I like, I like what duck, duck, do is, duck, duck <laughs> to go <laughs> is doing, not duck, duck, goose. Um, so it's, it might be worth looking at. And then Visual Studio Code, which is Microsoft's uh, lightweight code editor, you know, compared to Visual Studio. It's actually built with Electron, so it's the size of a battleship. But whatever, one of the key advantages or, you know, strengths of this product is its extensibility. It has an incredible add-on market. And I think what Microsoft has found is that most people who use Visual Studio Code are web developers, and they use it on the Mac or Linux or whatever, or Windows, obviously. And they ins- the first thing they install is the JavaScript um, debugging extension and now that's just built into visual studio oh, code nice. because so many people use it so oh nice no reason to install it you're really getting me uh, going on and learning javascript here i'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying. it's just you know if you're gonna target the whole world I, well oh god yeah if that's go. the language to know these days <clears throat> yeah. for sure it's too bad it's so terrible but you know yeah. it is what it is i, mean, so. I have the uh, the book the complete javascript which the most recent mm. use i think was to prop up a piece of furniture so i could <laughs> work on it and then i also have a right. much much thinner book called javascript the good parts and yes. uh it's, there's a big difference yeah. yes. Uh, yes i have a book there's a good book called essential javascript yeah, if you, especially if you well. like yeah. uh, books that look like they were laid out with latex <laughs> it's got that kind of, <laughs> probably it literally it, it has that vibe it's, nice. it's but it's it's a good book most good. almost all my list books are, are written in tech yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i know you can, t- you can totally yeah. tell you can tell uh mary joe foley you haven't said a word in miles maybe we could persuade you to maybe join something us about xbox perhaps with an xbox uh, maybe or yes. an enterprise <laughs> pick of the week uh an even better pick. SharePoint is oh, um, my you, pick you of the to, week. Yeah, I had to do it. All right. <laughs> enough, from, enough from the peanut gallery over there. Um, okay. There is going to be an on-premises version of SharePoint server that comes out in the second half of this calendar year. That has we not existed in the past? No, new. That's new a version. surprise. But huh. here's the most surprising thing is the name. 
It's going to be called SharePoint Server Subscription Edition, Ooh, yeah. even though it's on-prem. But wait, so last, I own it. Uh, I know. So Microsoft said this last year, but I don't think a lot of people paid attention or realized they were serious maybe, but the next on-prem version of Exchange Server, SharePoint Server, Skype for Business Server, and Project Server all are going to require a subscription to use them on on prem and the subscription is what's going to get you the security updates, the support and product updates. And, and it's not an option to say, I don't want the subscription. So if you want the on-prem version, you got to take the subscription. The question is how much will it cost? We have no idea. They haven't told us yet how much that will cost. Um, but they did publish this week, a public preview that people can start kicking the tires of. And they also published on the Microsoft Docs site a list of the new features coming. And unlike Windows 10 21H2, there are actually a lot of new features coming to the next version of SharePoint Online. Uh, so if you care about SharePoint and you want to run it online, you should go check out the public preview bits and the documentation that's out there as of now. Okay. I will not. All right. Uh, <laughs> All right. No. no I, I don't have any uh, occasion. You don't need it. Point. No. Right. You don't need it. I don't yeah. share anything. Uh, <laughs> how about a code name? So this is an old code name that's being uh, re revised. Uh, yeah, kind of revised. Um, Project Mocha. Project Mocha was going to be this cool looking canvas that Microsoft was building into Outlook for the web where you could bring your to-dos and your notes and everything and make it kind of look the way you wanted. The weirdest thing always about Project Mocha was Microsoft started rolling it out to people with Outlook on the web and, and even to my, some Microsoft 365 users and they never would talk about it. Like anytime I'd say, oh, so you're rolling out Project Mocha. We have nothing more to share. I'm like, no, <laughs> but you're actually like rolling it out. It's I'm not asking a question that's like a product, right? Nope, have nothing to share. Well, now we know why they had nothing to share because... They are actually taking Mocha and they're building it instead of, instead into this thing called the Outlook Calendar Board, which is going to be part of the updated and new version of Outlook. So Project Mocha is not going to exist in the form it does today. It's not going to be a separate thing. It's going to be part of this Outlook Calendar Board. Um, Microsoft actually wrote about this this week and said, guess what? Project Mocha has been a success. Good to know. <laughs> Since they would never talk about it, good to know that you guys think it's a success. Um, and That's amazing. instead will be part of the calendar board in the new <laughs> version of Outlook. <laughs> I, uh, why, I, what? Uh. I know, I know. Every time they, I, I was like, wait, but I'm not asking you to like confirm it. You, you're actually like talking about it, but you have nothing more to share. I don't, I don't understand. War's over. We declare victory. Mission accomplished. Right? Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Kind of like that. Yeah. Microsoft has <laughs> concluded the production of the IBM PC Junior. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Uh, yeah. Actually, it looks cool. It's kind of a vision boardy kind of it thing. It is. So it it is. Sense, like for people you know? like that, like that kind of thing where you're like, oh, I want to make my own space yeah. and like pin my to dos here and yeah. my sticky notes over here. Yeah. It's like Sticky Notes Pro. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. It's for yeah. the uh, P interest um, users among <laughs> exactly. us. Exactly. For people who want to pin things onto something for some reason, that's that. Oh, wait, that be means a pin. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, oh Lord, Paul, Lordy, Lordy. Now, is this a picture of Sriracha uh, next to your beer pick of the week this time? It is. Oh, tell it us is. all about it. <laughs> the beer is called Orange Crush. It hmm. tastes like Orange Crush if you made Orange Crush with delicious natural ingredients instead of fake, horrible ingredients. I want it. <laughs> it's mandarin and blood orange. Ooh, yum. Dry hop it with two excellent hops, citra and mosaic. Mix it all together with a big paddle and you get this beer <laughs> that comes out very orangey um, and uh, so delicious. The crazy the thing is, this is a double IPA that does not taste like a double IPA. It tastes like a delicious orange soda. That's what it tastes like. It's the uh, Aperol <laughs> Spritzer of beers. It is. Right. It is. So it, this is from Finback Brewing um, in, well, originally in Queens, now with an outpost in Brooklyn. And Finback does all these really crazy takes on IPAs. They have another one that I love called Yellow Cake that tastes just like Yellow Cake. 
Um, you know, like so, hold when on, your hold mom. You mean, you mean the, so it or, like Orange like Crush a, is the name yeah. is an REM song that has to do with Agent Orange. And they also have one called Yellow Cake. Maybe they're. Uh, I mean, is this a is this a hidden theme I that we're uncovering? So. I mean, this is a it nation state it, beer beer maker. It could be. I just took it as making delicious food dr food and drinks into beer. But there is real a real thing. There's Yellow Cake, little Debbie's yes. Yellow Cakes. Yes, there's that are Orange really good. Crush. Yeah, <laughs> which is one of my favorite sodas. Do they have one called Aluminum Tubes? <laughs> uh, no. Mm, scud scud missile. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, scud missile might be a good beer, actually. They yeah. do not. But yeah. if you ever get to try, Finback makes IPAs, but they try all kinds of fun, crazy things with them so that they don't just taste like the IPA that Paul Theron hates. It tastes like <laughs> really good stuff. I used to really like a double IPA from uh, uh, Blue Hills Brewery. I know. Right. Quarter I remember. Mile. You had a couple that you liked. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, the first step, we're all spritzers on me, Paul, next July. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I expect a little umbrellas. We sail out of nice. Seattle Harbor, wave goodbye nice. to the Space Needle, and head With the on. smell of peanut butter whiskey <laughs> wafting in the air. Excellent. <laughs> I hope you will all join us in the lounge for the for, for Stephanie yeah. Thorat's cocktail right. of Palooza mm -hmm. and Paul Thorat's whiskey of peanut butter. <laughs> and uh, right. I'll, uh, bitter we'll, whiskey nights. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. <laughs> yeah. Cruise.twit.tv if you want to know more about the Twit Alaska cruise coming up July 2022. Paul and I will be on there. Uh, this was a fun show. I missed you guys. I had a good time in Hawaii, but I had to say, you I, know, I, I was watching your photos and I, I don't feel like you missed us that much. You know, I, I knew I he was you. secretly, he wanted to find out about cloud PC. Yeah. I actually did. I actually did. He's I like, honey, I could go to the beach, but they're doing a thing about windows 365 and I just got to next time I'm bringing cardboard this. cutouts of you guys and Sriracha too. <laughs> we'll put them on the beach and then I won't feel so nice. all alone. Aww. We do Windows Weekly every Wednesday morning, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, 1800 UTC. I tell you when because you could watch us do it live. Now, you're watching the making of the show, not the final product, although it's pretty close. Uh, the live streams, audio and video, are available at twit.tv slash live. Uh, of course, if you're watching live, you'll want to chat with us live, and that's the IRC chat, irc.twit.tv. You can use your browser to get there. Uh, or if you're an old hand with IRC, you can use your favorite IRC client. And uh, there's there are people in that IRC all day and night. After the fact, on-demand versions of the show are available at our website, twit.tv slash WW for Windows Weekly. When you get there, you'll see there's also a link to the YouTube channel. You can watch there. And you can also subscribe in your favorite podcast player. That way you'll get it automatically the minute it's available. If you're watching... You know, on your own time, you can do our on-demand social networks. There's a forum at twit.community, the Twit Community Forums. Those are free and open to all. And there's also a, a Mastodon instance. That's the federated kind of Twitterverse thing at twit.social. I also invite you all, if you like this show and you want to support it or any of the shows we do or all of the shows we do, to join Club Twit. Uh, we have uh, some nice benefits for members. $7 a month gets you ad-free versions of all the shows. Ad-free and tracker-free. It's uh, The shows are about half as long, so you really they really whiz by. You also get uh, the Twit Plus feed with dedicated content, things that happen before and after the show, special material we put together, like our uh, Untitled Linux show, things like that. And uh, you get access to our Discord. You'll hear Paul and Mary Jo talk about that. You're in there a lot, Mary Jo. That's nice. I'm glad you yeah. go in there uh, during the show. Um, that is, I think, one of the best things I've discovered through Club Twit. I just really have fun in that uh, Discord. And we have chats for all the shows, but also all the geeky topics uh, you uh, might imagine, including a uh, for people who are going on the cruise, there's a special uh, section for people on the cruise. So we can talk about that as well. Uh, for more information about Club Twit, again, $7 a month. We're looking at a yearly subscription. We didn't want to do that uh, up front because we heard that the biggest problem people have uh, who do this uh, are people saying, I subscribe for a year, but I don't want to anymore. Can I have my money back? Right. And so we just thought we'll do right. it month to month. 
Yeah. Then worst case scenario, you're at seven bucks. I think it's worth it. I, you know, we haven't had a lot of churn. Almost everybody who joined in the first few months is still a member. And it really does help us put this together. I don't know if you've noticed, but advertising sales have been a little bit slow through COVID, a little, a lot. Uh, and with, yeah. with you know, Spotify and Apple kind of eating up the podcast world, uh, they're also eating up a lot of the podcast advertising. I think it's going to be a little harder for us to support ourselves through ads alone. Plus, we know a lot of you want an ad free. So uh, this seemed like a good way to, to solve both those problems. Club Twit is at twit.tv slash Club Twit. Join us. We'd love to have you. Paul Therat does his thing at therat.com, and uh, the Field Guide to Windows 10 is still available at leanpub.com, although as he did announce two weeks ago, there is going to be a Field Guide to Windows 11. That's right. good news. Have you started that? I have. Yeah. Nice. I have. Good. Wow. I think I might start, I think late this summer I'm going to publish it early. Oh. You know, and like an mm -hmm. ad, you know, like before it's pre, done. Pre, pre, the mm -hmm. beta version. Yeah. Yeah. That, that public yeah, beta. That's okay. actually great. I would buy that as a way of getting ready. And then the nice thing yeah. about doing it the way you do it, you get updates. So once it comes out, you'll get, you know, you'll get a, more updates to, right, the, to right. the book and so forth. That's a great idea. Leanpub.com. Look for the field guide to Windows 10. Mary Jo Foley writes for ZDNet. Her blog is all about Microsoft.com. Do you call it a blog? I don't know yeah. if it's a blog. Yeah, a blog is okay. Okay. I, I don't care. It's uh, it's Mary's personal newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> right. Without letting or kerneling. No kerning, no letting. Kerneling. Kerneling. <laughs> no kerneling either. No, also kerneling. No kerneling. <laughs> no curling and no curling allowed, actually. No. We had some no. Canadians. They tried. We had to stop them. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, we have had, I did want to mention this also, a number of people... Stopped by the studio unannounced. <laughs> we mm. had to turn oh, them wow, away. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. oh, so you probably heard we have reopened this week. In fact, this is the first Wednesday they had lunch oh. down the hall. There was all this noise. I don't know if you heard it. And I went, what's going on? Yeah, Who are these people in my exciting. studio? Right. We're, they're back, baby. And it's really nice to have our uh, Wednesday lunches back and all of our staff back in house. Yeah. We're so thrilled. And so people heard that and they thought, oh, maybe the studios are open. But because Delta variant's still raging, we don't want to have to demand your vaccine card when you come to the door. Yeah. Uh, and I just really want to protect all of our employees. They're all vaccinated, but I still want to protect them all. So uh, we are not yet opening up the studio. I am sorry. I know a lot of people come out to uh, our area for summer vacation. And like I said, we've had several people show up, uh, just say, can I come in? And I'm sorry, but for safety. Can they at least, like, you know, look in the window with their hands on the glass? <laughs> no, you can't even do that. <coughs> no, you can't. Yeah. You can look in the window. You won't see much, but you can look in the window. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, we're, I, so please, I, I apologize. I would love to let you in. If you catch me, I'll probably will let you in, and I'll get beaten for it. But <laughs> um, but we really don't want we don't want any uh, uh, yeah. non-staff people on-prem yet. Um, I, I hope at some point we will be able to open this up once things settle down a little bit. Get your vaccines, kids. Let's let's yeah. let's knock this thing out, and uh, so we can move on with our lives. Paul, Mary, Joe, have a great week. Is it going to be hot in the, on the east? You got Ugh. thunderstorms now, right? It's, it's hot. Been brutal. It's been so hot. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. I think uh, it's going to be a little less hot, but yeah, maybe. Uh, <laughs> but like, no, not really. Stay cool. Yeah. Never mind. Stay cool. Yeah. Yeah. We're all under heat domes now. That's the latest. We have an orange uh, moon and a red sun because we of the too. Oregon fire. From yep. Oregon? Yep. yep, we do too. Yep. <laughs> yep. It has literally created weather across the entire continent. Holy cow. Yeah. Yep. Holy cow. Well, okay. <laughs> Jeez. Either that or it's UFOs. I don't know. But it could be. Aliens. Just stay something. cool, kids. Yeah. We'll see you next week <laughs> on Windows right. Weekly. Bye bye. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you are interested in checking out all things smart home and Internet of Things, then you should check out Smart Tech Today, the podcast I, Micah Sargent, do with my co-host Matthew Casanelli. It's all about the smart home and improving your automations. <laughs>